Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Joel Moran and I'm here with Rip Brown, Andrew Velez, and Joe Dells. And it's now episode 372. In this episode, we will be giving out NBA awards. Talk about the Celtics giving Drew Holiday an extension, Giannis's injury, brother, and more. We were just talking about that That's one of these last crazy. pods ago. What were we doing? Well, well Joe, Joe said it. Joe Celtics said it. Cap. He said, hey, Drew Holiday says he wants to sign an extension. He it, wants to stay with the Boston Celtics. It was more than I was expecting. You didn't think he'd get <laughs> I wasn't 33. Think, I think we said, I think I said 25 to 30. Yeah. Um, respect to you for knowing your players. Yeah, I thought it was going to be 25 I mean, to 30. I was expecting you 30 you 33 on the table. I don't think you want uh, you. Yeah. Man. Give me that. Fourth option, 33? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> need that. It's all day. Yeah. His defense still was all world. He was the best three point shooter he's ever been in his life. Corner merchant. Man. He earned his money. Yep. Yeah, for sure. I and I honestly think his game is going to age fine. We'll talk about it in the segment. We won't get into it now. We could get it over with now if you want. Get it over with. I was looking forward to it. I wasn't thinking getting over. It. I was looking forward to well, it. How was your day, Dust? Uh, it was good, bro. It was a calm day. Uh, just worked. How about you? Regular day. You know, regular degler in the morning. How were the kids today? Kids with the kids, man. Kids with the kids. Hold on, bro. I'm about to do you a favor. Good looks. Gotcha. Uh, my day was cool. Hit hit the gym. Hit some legs. Uh, that was tough. I will not lie. But what has been my primary focus recently has been this dog. I gotta say, I, I'm I'm taking the the new school approach at training a dog, and I have to say, it is wildly difficult. What's, What's the, the new, new school, school approach? New You're not hitting it? Okay. Jesus Christ. What's the old way? The old way. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a valid, fucking I think it's a valid question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The new school way. Essential, well, the old school to new school. Old school. Let's say the dog pisses in the house, right? You put their nose in the pee. You say, no, yeah. you don't do that. You take them outside. Uh, or you put their nose in the pee. You put them in the cage. You clean it up. Essentially, just... A lot of cage work where if they do something that you don't negative reinforcement exactly yeah. they do you do they do something that you don't like you put them in the cage the cage Sounds like is a time from long ago <laughs> okay see that's the old school uh, so again <laughs> uh, new school that was, you know what I'm talking about right? <laughs> oh Jesus here we go <laughs> gotcha <laughs> the new school way if they do something wrong you ignore it uh, if they're doing something in the moment and you want them to stop you say no you take a water bottle sp- 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 uh, right in the domey uh, but. Uh, if they pee, this is where I've really had the difficult time where she pees. I just have to take her outside, wait until she pees, and then bring her inside. It's hard to not hit her. Okay, again, enough with the hitting, Sorry. please. All right. We don't believe in animal cruelty. <laughs> it's not animal cruelty. It's not animal you're just, cruelty. You're just training the dog, bro. Yeah. Oh, just hitting the dog? No, it's not animal cruelty. I've never hit my dog. No, no I, we're not. Don't, you're not doing any of this out of spite. You, you love the dog. You just have to. It's not even like a little, like, oh, uh, yeah, you're not there beating tap. the dog. But it's like, never, no, you can't do that. I've never smacked the dog, even in trying it's to try. A little, little punch in the face. <laughs> nah, like, Jesus nah, he's wilding. Christ. He's wilding. <laughs> oh, no, I've never, even when I was training Shiloh, Penny, no, I never hit. Either of them. Nah. He's making a hit. He's they'll, making they'll a fuck around. They'll yeah. fuck around. Come back. Y'all said hit to me. I don't know what the fuck we're saying. Hey, you're, you're training a, a dog that's going to be big. They're going to fuck around, come back, and get their get back on you. See, uh, they got to uh, remember that six years later. I remember this. Like, but here's the thing. If me. you say that, Penny, we kind of trained in that old school way. No, no hitting, no tapping, no nothing, nothing of that sort. Mm. But again, like if she peed in the house... Nose in the pee. If she pooped in the house, wouldn't do all that. That's a bit much. But like, put her What's face. What's the difference between just a little love tapping, putting their nose in the pee? It's kind like, of like if we're being honest, that's like that's just yeah, yeah, like that's no, okay. bro. What are we doing? I guess that's, that's, listen, that's, that's put cool. Them in the cage okay, is crazy. I, re- I respect. Well, the cage is normal. That's like any any. Let me not say that because one uh, one or two of the people that were working with us to get us the dog, Mm. she was like, listen, this is a little controversial. Not everybody agrees with this, but the cage is the best way to train a dog. Well, some dogs animal. really love cages, you know? some hate it. So that's My what, dog hated the That's cage. a big thing. We're trying to make it that this cage is like her Home. bedroom. We're, that's why I'm trying not Decorate to. Decorate Which is fair. We do have, we have like a nice little blanket you just over have the cage. It. Where do you have the cage? Like... In the family room. Okay. Charles was trying to convince me to have it in my room. So that way I have like complete mm-hmm. control over like her bathroom. Her Wasn't her, Penny's in his room? Penny was in his room. But I'm trying to make it that the living room, because she's basically going to roam around the house. But... Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like that might be the next step. So that way, like, I'm completely in control of it. But is this, sorry to cut you off, is this your dog or your and Allie's dog? No. Well, okay. Mine and Al's dog. But okay. The, really mine. Because I'm the one that takes care of it. <laughs> Let's say it, just, it lives at the house. Yeah, it lives exactly. at your house. Yeah, yeah it is. It's at my house. 
Got it. So Your is dog. this not is this approach not working for you? The new school approach? I didn't say it's not working for me because when we take her out, she does pee. She does go to the bathroom outside. But it's not working for me individually because it's taking longer than I may want. I know I just got this dog, but it's he's super young. She, it's like she three 12, months. Two, it's yeah, 12 time. weeks, 13 weeks. It is going to take time. I know this is really testing my patience and I'm, this is one of the main reasons I'm happy about it. Uh, but I want to see results quicker. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, bro. Having a puppy that young, it's going to take some time till they're just like fully over it. You know, and I feel like I appreciate that. And I feel like I need some more outside. Uh, You're not getting that done in a couple yeah. weeks. All right. That's good to yeah, know. Like there's no I'm way. being harsh on myself. Like babies take yeah. years to get out of diapers. Okay, you know I mean? feel like it's different though. Animals, <laughs> no, of course, you're not. She's already like almost years. two years. Divide that by three. Yeah, uh-huh. but that's so what I'm think, saying. Like it's going to take some months. That eight month period, he yeah. should be good. She All should right. be good. All right, damn. It takes some time. It's just puppies, See, that's bro, another like, thing, bro. So we have the cage, right? Her cage that she sleeps in, and then we have like this open pen. This is kind of like her to like run around a little bit, like, mm-hmm. but it's still secure, still locked in, but like just a bigger space for her to run around and and kind of hang with us. That's where she kind of messes up the most. She pees in there the most. She poops in there the most. And I feel like I don't want the rest of the fam to put her in there because it's kind of fucking up what we've already put in place. But they feel like they'd rather have her in there because she can do a little bit more, which I understand. But if she's going to pee and poop in the house, this is defeating the purpose. <laughs> exactly. So this is this has been my recent uh, my recent time and, and how I've been spending the majority of my days trying to take care of this dog and make sure that she grows up and is smart. I will say the alternative is you could do the cage method, but just don't make the cage its home. You could just make a little See, area and that's where they Joel, where you got like a home, you got pillows, you got this everything. Is my thought process. This is my thought process. Yeah. I'm saying this is ultimately not going to be her house. Yes. It, this this cage is not how I see it. This isn't her house. The house is the house. Her to roam around wherever the fuck she wants to go. And this cage is a temporary thing. But apparently they want it to be a long term answer. So I'm, I'm just going with uh, what the majority of the house wants to do, even though I'm the one taking care of it. You would get results quicker for sure. No doubt. My dog used to sleep around the house, but he was so small and black. Like when the lights are off, sometimes people wake up and step on him. Oh, yeah, bro. Like five in the morning. It's real dark. Six in the morning. You step down. <laughs> just like, oh, shit. <laughs> like my fault. My fault. You know, you didn't mean to step uh-huh. on him. Yeah, oh, that's it, it, scary. Because he sleeps. Right under next to the beds, like right next to the bed. So it's like tough for him sometimes. That's not enough. Yeah, we, we probably have to put other beds around the house. We got a small dog, though. You got a kind of big dog. So right now she's still small, but she's going to get big. Yeah, ours was never getting big. He's probably like this big the most. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you know how big she's going to get? I don't. I'd assume around penny size. Penny, I don't know her size specifically, but Penny's Penny like a little hefty. Penny, yeah. She's yeah. like 50, 60 pounds. Penny Jeez. knocks into you. You're, yeah, you don't feel that. No, for sure. <laughs> Nah, she's a big girl. She she's is. a big girl. She, she, like, oh, she don't shit. really know it. But she's a great dog. She, she is. She's very well trained. Charles did an excellent job, so I've been trying to like pick his brain. Did tell- you do the cage method? Yes. She's just super hyper. She has mad it's discrimination at this point. What's happening to you? How old's Penny? Right, like uh, Penny is four. Really? I know, man. Yeah. We got her in the COVID year. Her, like her birthday's like, like, on uh, Three something. Kings. I know, it's nuts. Time's flying. It's like I barely remember her being a puppy and barely training her in that. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys excited for UFC 300? I am. I no, am. You can I can't go wait to the movie Alex. theater to watch it. I did we, see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, someone just put it in. Frank, Frank put it in our group chat. I, I might want, do it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to watch. Probably. But I'm going to the Bad Bunny concert on, on Saturday. So is Seb. Oh, tough. Okay, lit. Yeah, so that's one of those. That I don't know if I'm going to be out in time to watch it. But I definitely will maybe go to the movies. I'll to probably sneak it in on my phone, though. Yeah, I mean, it's a must watch. Yeah. I mean, anytime Alex fights, I'm tuned in. Right there. This is 300. They're trying to make it a spectacle. Yeah, it makes I've sense. I've heard this this card is pretty stacked. It's a good-ass card. I was going to say, Alex is on this. Uh, Charles Olivier. Gaethje is on, on it, too. Who Gaethje is Gaethje facing? Max Holloway. So in BMF that, belt. In that match, that's going to be a great match. Belt. Which belt? The BMF. The uh, baddest motherfucker. That's my fucking belt. Get the fuck out of here. So in this, uh, now, even though they, they'll fuck me up, no, uh, they will violate. Just had to cover his bases. I can't. I can't fuck with them. UFC uh, fighters. I understand. It's too much. Uh, Prospects has a free square. Justin Gaethje. It's 0.5 significant strikes. Uh, the way Gaethje and Max Holloway fights, you know, it's called a free square for a reason. That's the promo they got going on for Max UFC 300. Probably get that done in the first round. Yeah. Yeah. Max is one and one. So it's the easiest square you can use to play with. So if you're interested, you can go to prize picks, use code PAS for a 100% deposit match up to $100. But I am excited for UFC 300. Who is uh, Alex Pereira facing? Jamal, Jamal Hill. Hill. 
Going to be a good fight. Jamal Hill is not a scrub by any means. How does he look? He's Black. a big dude. <laughs> oh, I figured his huge. name is Jamal, right? I knew you were going there. <laughs> Just wanted to see how you... <laughs> Uh, he's a he's a light heavyweight. I don't think he's that tall. <laughs> and they spell it J A M A H A L. Yeah, come on, come on. You thought I needed to guess that? <laughs> Are um, any white Jamals? Jamal. If I mean, he was Jamal white, Murray's I light shot. skin. He, he is. looks a little pale, but he's not white. No, he's probably like Drew's skin color. Yeah. Probably give, give or take. Yeah. Um, Jamal. And not big Alex fans. Uh, what's his fighting style? I have I don't watch Jamal, so I have okay. no idea. I know Alex is pure Alex boxer. A, I was gonna say that, yeah, yeah. He's, not, he's not really a grappling yeah. kind of guy. He don't no. play like he that, just but he hits extremely hard. Yeah, Yo, down. he just had a video uh uh put up on his Instagram of him in the UFC uh what's what is that called? It's just the center. Gym, yeah, training yeah. center. And he goes and he's hitting that machine that kind of tells you the power of your of your punch. I think it was like 191,000 points, whatever wow. the fuck. Yeah. Bro. It was One- like this. It has this big green bar, and he hits it, bro, and this shit goes all the way green right away. It was crazy. You couldn't pay me to take a punch from no way. Guys. Nah, no fuck way, bro. No. You could no. pay me. Yeah? Really? Yeah, I'd You're do going shit to the hospital. That's cool. You might have internal bleeding. That's You're breaking money. ribs. I have the money to fix all that. <laughs> yeah. How much money are we talking? Like <laughs> let's, start, let, let's start. What if he at, gave you. Not an exorbitant sh- amount. What if he gave you 500K? I'll take it. Okay, that's game changer oh. for me. Your hospital dome? bills might be like yeah. So your father, your hospital bills are probably gonna be more than five. I just won't go. <laughs> to the that's, hospital, you can die. That's game changer for me. That's game changer for me. I ain't gonna lie. Five hundred. Just one punch. You just gotta take one punch. Yeah, now nah, you're cooked. Tray in the nose, so your nose. Nah, is gonna honestly, go. bro, oh, you can nose? take one. If you even take one to the body, oh. If it's in the oh, nose, uh, right, if it's in the face, I need a million. If it's a body shot, five hundred. Body 500. might fuck you up. Hit more. me like right here. I'll just take this pain. Flow. That shit might might be having your organs and mm-hmm. organ organs in opposite places. I need that though. You get hit in the face where you're not. You're not gonna be able to open your eyes for months. Maybe that's fine. I got money, man. <laughs> that shit reminds me of uh, in Jackass. They they had uh, Francis and Ganu pull up and punch one of the guys in the balls. <laughs> I was tripping. Oh no! Yeah, that's wow. no money can do that. That show is crazy. I'm good bro. off that. Yeah. <laughs> Francis and Ganu, <laughs> did he have a cup and protection? Yeah, yeah, yeah he okay. did have a cup. Still that makes help. it a little bit better. That doesn't help. That nah, shit fucks up your thigh, though. Not for Wearing cups has always been uncomfortable for me. Hey, facts. Yeah, no, Francis no. hits like a Mack truck. I it's know, the man. hardest recorded punch in, yeah. What's in, in Mack world truck? history. He hits like, like oh, it's a I Mack thought, truck. Hey, what you thought I said? <laughs> yo, what? Yo, what what I said. He's a freaky guy, man. I think we've always known that, but like, he just doesn't hide it anymore. We're here. I get it. So when Dells takes the glasses off, he's a different person. Can't see. No glasses. I can't see. No. No, I know. I don't know. Barely, everyone looked at me. I don't know if I want to. Guy's say. barely a human without his glasses on. Yeah. Let's get into these NBA teams or NBA awards, I should say. Bro, Let's get into topics. that. We got some. <laughs> the NBA teams is a subtopic of. Did the we? NBA did awards. we all? Were you guys all expecting to do all NBA defensive? Yes. Ro- oh, were you? I was just a little yeah. alarmed. I, I was a little surprised. I wasn't, but I did it. Of course, I did it because when we usually do it every year, we, yeah, we you usually, always so I doing just it two different episodes. Yeah, weird. I just assumed yeah, it's everybody. most definitely an award. That's my fault. The NBA awards, we're going to get into that, but I feel like we should get into these current events that are going on. It's not much to talk about. Uh, Snack these out, one, two, three? Yes. Celtics extended Drew Holiday, four years, 135 mil. We were just talking about this. Good old Celtics, Celtics cap, space, cap situation. Right now, it's Shout jo- wig. Joel, I, I feel like anything that happens with Celtics contracts, I'm not going to doubt you. Uh, and if you still think that- He was that- wrong about the money. Yeah, but I wasn't wrong about resigning us. By what? Resigning five million? No, I like said 20, ten. I said twenty-five to thirty. He I was think. leaning on twenty-five. I was probably leaning yeah, he, twenty-five. He was leaning heavier Drew, on twenty-five. The money. All right, regardless. I mean, listen, you he can't. Got 34? You can't pay everybody though. <laughs> we can pay Derek. That's fine though. Ah, and that's exactly what I'm saying. If you still can give him you that, you know, money, we could pay Derek. Porzingis is between KP and Derek. Porzingis took a pay cut. Um, like I don't think people understand that. Well, they're not free agent at the same but time. Tatum's so one be year, due to. one year extension now. Tatum's getting sixty. Oh no! Yeah, yeah he's it's scary. Super, he's getting super max, super max. Yeah. scary money. So Tatum's gonna get sixty. That means Drew's money gonna kick in. Then you gotta pay White White. Somebody's gonna kick in. Ah, God bless. Realistically, you need the five. You, you need those five. You Listen, make the role in, players work. And the reason that I think it's. Not terrible as of right now. Like realistically, there's probably like a two year window because you have Payne Pritchard under contract. Um, you have you traded for Xavier Tillman. You could get him back on bird rights. Luke Cornett, I think, has been a pretty decent backup center for us as well. Um, I think they have enough enough depth, and that's with Payne Pritchard on a couple of years left. Sam Hauser, who's been one of the better three point shooters, has a year left. They have enough depth to be able to overcome it for the next couple of years. But yes, once you get into three years into the future and everyone's paid, including Derek, including the Tatum Supermax, Payne. 
Pritchard's contract is up, that's when you're going to be like, all right, we need to fill, fill this bench out with minimum guys. Or by then, you know, hopefully Jordan second Walsh. Second round picks. Second round picks. We got some picks. Jordan Walsh. I think Jane Springer might have a couple years on his deal as well. Um, but again, like when you have a team this good, I can't sit here and be like, shit, bro. In, in 2025 or 2026, we might have to sign guys on the minimum. Like the team is way too good. You have to invest now. And if you don't resign Drew Holiday at this moment, he likely declines his player option. He hits free agency. Who knows if he ends up leaving because he's liked his time in Boston, but there's going to be a dozen suitors for Drew Holiday if he hit the free agent market uh, because number one, he's a great player. And number two, the free agency class isn't that great this off season. Um, so I think it was a great move for the Celtics. It is a little bit more expensive than I was expecting, but you got to keep this five intact. You keep this five intact, you're going to be competing for a championship. That's it. We've seen what this five can can accomplish. We're talking about the best team in basketball and wins wise, and, and it's not even close, especially in the Eastern Conference, where the next closest team I want to say is what 15 games away. I mean, what the what the Boston Celtics have been able to to accomplish this season. If you wanted to give Drew. Five more million than you were anticipating, but you still are able to bring back Derek White. All you essentially need is Tatum, White, Drew, JB, Christos Porzingis, and then you have two, three role players, essentially because that's NBA playoff basketball. You run that seven, eight-man rotation, and that's what you're essentially going throughout the playoffs. We've seen that this core can obviously still make deep playoff runs at ECF, even without Christos Porzingis and Drew Holiday. We've seen this team make the finals. You invest this money into these guys because obviously they've just shown you that they can be the most dominant team in basketball, both offensively and defensively. This makes perfect sense to me. Drew Holiday at the age of 33, giving him 34 million. Maybe that's a little bit that maybe that's a, a decent price tag, but at the same time, this season. He's done exactly what you would want out of a, a role player, a glorified role player, the way that we described Drew Holiday. Knocks down the three-point shot as good as any player in the NBA right now. He's probably the best corner three-point shooter right now in the NBA outside of the obvious. And then on top of it, his defense is still elite. What more can you ask for him? Especially at the age of 33, you spoke about it a little bit. That game ages well in, in today's NBA. You play high-level defense and you knock down a three-point shot, you'll have a job for a very, very long time. This contract, it, although the, the number is a little bit high, the Boston Celtics just need to retain those five guys, and they're going to be okay. Oh, okay. So I guess you want me to go. Um, yeah, the number was a little high, but like Dallas has mentioned, you keep the five <laughs> together. You know, Drew will be 34 this summer, so he'll be mm -hmm. you know, hitting the 35, 36, 37 mark. But I don't think his game – really would age too much with his, like, because I don't, he doesn't rely too much on athleticism. You know, he's very savvy in his ways. He's a good shooter, you know. And I think the only pro the only way this is going to be a problem is if you guys don't win. I think that's when it becomes a situation where if you don't win, you know, one ring or two rings in the next three to four years, then you start looking at these contracts like, damn, yeah, we pay these guys, but is it enough to win the championship because if we don't win? So I think that's the only time the problem will be, you know, present, but as of right now, you have to retain this guy. You guys just had the best regular season since Larry Bird, if I'm not mistaken, even probably better than that. You know, 60 wins is definitely impressive. We haven't seen it since KD and Steph Warriors. You know, so this is an impressive season. Drew Holiday's having a career year in both corner spots while still being an NBA defensive player. And you have Porzingis, you have Derek White. So you want to remain and keep this starting five because it's been the best starting five in the league this year. It's just about down the road. If they don't win, you know, then the contracts start looking funny. But right now, it's a good deal. They got a two-year window. It's this season and next season, and then things start to get really rough because in 25-26, Jalen Brown is getting $53 million. Porzingis is getting thirty million. Pritchard is getting seven million. Walsh is getting two million, and they just signed Drew Holiday. That's about like thirty-four mil. So we're at one hundred twenty-six million dollars, and Tatum either accepts his player option for thirty-seven mil, or he signs an he's extension. Super max. Yeah, he's if he gets that super max, and let's just say it's seventy mil, you know, per year. That's how contracts for star players are nowadays. That puts them at one hundred ninety-six million Oof. without even bringing in Derek White into the equation. Derek White, cool. so 35, in, 40. Yes, in two years, that's when it's going to get really rough for the Celtics. But as of right now, I mean, what are you going to do? Not re-sign Drew Holiday? You know, not re-sign these guys? You worry about that in the future, but that's why I'm interested to see it's going to be one of those guys, Derek White or Chris Hosprosingas, that they might choose to prioritize so they don't run into a huge problem two years down the line and trying to pay Tatum and Brown supermax contracts while also filling out the roster. You think Tatum will be a, a wee guy and accept his player option? 
No way in hell. Uh, nah, he should decline tickets. Thirty-seven mil. Thirty-seven That's a good mil. Money. You compared to seventy mil. Of course, my brother's getting seventy. Come Unless on. you could just. But you give yourself one more year. One it's more a player year. option. Yeah, I think so. You will decline, brother. Don't even think. No, about he's declined. <laughs> he's declined. <laughs> will be real quick. <laughs> what is going to be Jason Tatum Supermax? It's going to be seventy. Uh, sounds right. North. Yeah, north of sixty-five. 60. Yeah. It said it's going to be a big mount. Yeah. Jalen Brown. He's going to make was, all NBA team again see, this year. Can yeah. we find that? Jalen Brown was sixty mil. A year, You're five, five year, three hundred like four million dollars. Eyes historic three hundred thirty eight million dollar extension in twenty twenty four. Because oh. I did see something like Luca would be eligible for like seventy a year or yeah. some shit. Well, Luca and Tatum are gonna break the banks again. Let's do let's do some some quick math. They're saying Tatum's would be like sixty seven mil, five years three thirty four mil. If Luca and, and Embiid's is five year three seventy six, then Tatum could be five years three fifty though. You know, I definitely think he's going to make mil less. Or 18, you know, about like 10 to 20 mil less. Why would it be that much less than Luca? Mm-hmm. I feel like they're better. No, I get that, that yeah. they could be better, but financially, yeah. They, yeah, it really doesn't get, it works. doesn't change that yeah, no, drastically. I agree. So if like, on this website I'm looking at, I think it might be. There low key might be a different stipulation <laughs> if job, if you, you like win MVP. It was a jab. It's fine. It was a, it was a, it was a good no, jab. It wasn't a jab. I do think I do think there's a different criteria. Like if you win MVP or you're like within the top something. No, MVP, it's either MVP extra. and or All NBA. Oh, it's and or okay. Tatum has made All NBA. Mm. Yeah. He hasn't made the first team like Luca though. No, no but he made it last year. Tatum has been first team. Is there a different contractual value for being first Multiple team? Multiple time. Well, and thir- second well he third has team? been first team. Tatum has been first team. It might not be but, this but it, year. It no, depends. he made it last year. But if that's the case, then him and Jalen Brown should be years, far ahead of each other because Brown has only made like thirteen. Because Jalen Brown, his was, his was three hundred four million over five years. And he made second team on this website that I'm looking at. It, it says Jalen uh, Brown's the highest paid player in, in NBA right now. That's this is sporting team. news. I, I think outside of annually, I think now it's it's Giannis after his extension. According to a list of players outlined by NBC, NBC Sports, Kurt Helen. Uh, Giannis, you're eligible 2024, five years, 334 mil. Tatum, five years, 334 mil. In 2025, I think it gets a 15% increase. So Lucas and Embiid's would be five years, 367 mil. Got it. So it's because they're getting their contracts a year Uh after. Got it. But yeah, it's just. Last year, he made all NBA first team, Tatum. So yeah, no, it's not about the first team. It's just about the year you're getting it. You know, mm-hmm. Tatum is going to get it 2024. Luke is going to get it 2025. Each year, there's an increase. So now, is there a stipulation or a little bit more? Oh, actually, Tatum is back to back on B first. That's what I said. Know. Didn't know that. Yeah, the year they made the finals, he was first team. And then what this was past the con- on Spo track? This has from last off season. They're expecting five years, 308 million. 308 from Tatum? Yeah. But this was. I was going to say, I just saw basketball news. Year old. 338. Well, we point is that it's a lot of money. Tatum's going to get paid a lot, and they're paying Jalen Brown, and you're paying Chris House Porzingis 30 mil, and you have to see what the long term future with him is going to be. Drew Holiday now getting paid 34 mil for the next four years. It's going to be an insane tax bill on the owner. Uh, I think more than anything, that's what it is. Like, if the owner's willing to pay, and he said, he said it this past offseason, I think it was after we signed Jalen Brown to that contract. He said, if we're competing for championships, like Brad can do whatever he wants money wise, like he has my blessing. So, as long as he's willing to pay that bill, of course, you're going to have the actual like NBA physical uh, restrictions, like you can't trade picks seven years out, uh, vet minimum guys, no MLE, stuff like that. Um, but again, keep these five guys together. It's really, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it's really just a, a tax bill to be the number one uh, issue with the Celtics. When you're over the second apron, you can't use aggregate contracts to trade for a Correct. single player making more money. That's also why Drew Holiday's contract, low key. I mean, he's making some big money down the road. You're not gonna be able to put those contracts together, like you're saying. Drew Holiday could be someone um, you flip. Drew, I hope you're here for four years and you win three championships. But <laughs> send out cash and trades. Drew Holiday. Use trade exceptions That's from money. prior years. <laughs> Take back more incoming than outgoing salary in a deal, which is probably obvious. Yeah, that second. Apron really does handcuff you, but Shit if you ass. have the players, who cares? Speaking of that, I know it's not a topic, but you saw one of the reasons why Minnesota didn't get sold to A-Rod was because they wanted to make some pay cuts yep. and not pay that second apron. Yep. I'm happy. They're calling Alex Rodriguez a snake oil salesman. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy because Minnesota is going to run into that issue too. They're going to run into the second apron soon. Yeah. Um, well, he was trying to finesse before. This was years ago, and now that... It also goes hand in hand where, yeah, you could say A-Rod was trying to be a snake, but at the same time, the old owner realized, wow, 
okay, Minnesota's good now. Yeah. Why would, would I tr- get rid of? Why would I sell when my team's value is only going to go up? You would have had to get one of your top four contracts. Yes. No, I Jay get was it. Probably uh-huh. Jaden. Jaden before Cat. Or I mean, regardless, you train one of them, and you're not going to be able to get someone um, like money wise. Jaden's contract same. is friendly though. Was it like thirty a year? I think less, maybe twenty. It probably wasn't bringing in Mike Conley or even doing the Gobert trade to begin with. Well, Mike's going to go down to about fifteen next year. I thought Jaden got like five for a one twenty five. My trip. I thought he was in the twenty sevens. I could be, of course, wrong. Because the but PR, the PR movement for Glenn Taylor is now in his favor. Yeah. Because essentially, you know, Alex Rodriguez and Mark Lord came in and said that they want to. They don't want to be over the apron. They they want to save money, and it sounded like they was trying to go into more of a rebuild than going all in to compete. And that's why Glenn Taylor didn't sell it because he was like, I feel like we got a window here to win, and I want to try to win. Timberwolves. Because all I'm sorry, go no, go ahead, go ahead. It's funny because all all people have been saying, or at least what I've been reading, is they don't like this guy Glenn Taylor as an as an owner. He's not been a good owner for years now. Mm -hmm. Again. You've hit a gold mine with Anthony Edwards being box office. Also, at the same time, Carl Anthony Towns, you go and you trade for Rudy Gobert. Mark, Lo, uh, excuse me, Lowe and, and A-Rod. Lori? Is it Lori? Yes, they had Lori and A-Rod bought in at Lore. the... Lore. L-O-R-E. Thank you, Lore. Lore. Uh, he bought in, they bought in at the perfect time, and now suddenly this guy wants to start caring about the Minnesota Timberwolves. That's the only thing that kind of is going back and forth with me. Uh, but at the same time, it, there was a dead, deadline for a payment. These two guys did not meet it. I mean, at the same time, NBA also said that they're not going to get involved. There's no place for them to to get involved in this dispute. So it's really going to be something that gets dragged out probably for a long time. And I wouldn't be surprised where, I, I mean, you would anticipate that a and Lore eventually would be the, the owners or majority owners. It's not seeming that way. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see how it can trend that way, especially now. Yeah, Timberwolves fans were not happy yesterday with my tweet. Uh, I got like, I feel like within two minutes, I got like fucking nine replies to Timberwolves fans. Um, I basically said that I don't think they're, I don't know how close they actually are to winning a championship with this core. Um, just because the offense sucks. The offense in the fourth quarter, really, offense and defense has been great this in this uh, in the clutch at least this season. Um, they're still like win percentage wise, actually pretty decent, which is funny, but. I just feel like this offense could get really stagnant, especially when things slow down and not having a secondary creator. Or Mike Conley is a secondary creator, but a secondary creator that has some more juice than Mike Conley. My my uh, comparison was, if you look at other teams who are in contention this year, the Mavs have Kyrie as kind of their secondary creator. The Thunder have J-Dub. The Nuggets have Jamal Murray. Shout out to Mike Conley. You're just not on that level, right? Like, those players are, are far better than you right now. And Jaden McDaniels, I think they were probably hoping could be that, hoping to make, as you mentioned before, like a Jalen Brown type, type leap offensively. Although Jalen Brown's not this, you know, super creator, at least he could do some things, um, putting the ball on the floor, being able to, to attack the rim. And he could still, is a, I think, has improved his passing this season. It's hard for me to view that team as like a championship contender because that's a lot of pressure on Ant. Ant really has to, um, he's super good, I think, as is in terms of um, kind of being a creator, having to run this offense in the fourth quarter. But if you want to win a championship like that, you have to be one of the best in the league. They got to play how they play. They got to play to their identity, their strength. That's their defense. That's how they're going to win in the playoffs. They just got to play elite defense to suffocate though. teams. Like, this Nuggets were going bat, basket, basket, basket in that fourth quarter. And listen, second half of back-to-back, no cat. You guys made that very well known. I understand it. Um, I'm just Cats thinking big picture. For a while. Just thinking big picture. Like, you could have a really good regular season, you know. Um, but... If you lost in like the first or second round, I think most people will be disappointed. Oh, and, and people don't throw a consolation prize. Look at the Kings last year. No. We're a top three seed. They lost in the first round. Uh, losing in the second round wouldn't be the worst thing in the world no. for the Wolves. Oh, no, I agree. But I just mean in the, in the sense of... First round, yeah, though. does not matter the jump you take. Going from 7 to 1 if fair. you do not make noise... They don't give a fuck. No, no one really cares about, oh, well, you, you, you know, you, you gave a, a very hard-fought second-round series, but you kind of fell short. No, we respected the Timberwolves last year for giving the Nuggets a respectable five games. And I say respectable because all the Nuggets players would talk about was how that was the toughest series on them. And, of course, Anthony Edwards did ball the hell out. But now here we are the next year. You guys are significantly better. Now you have the Rudy Gobert that you were anticipating when you traded for. Anthony Edwards has gotten better. Sure, you're not getting, you don't have Carl Anthony Towns for down the stretch of this season, but he's making his return tomorrow night. That's going to be huge against the Atlanta Hawks. You kind of get a, a chance to see him get some minutes before the playoffs. There's expectations. You're the number one seed. I, I don't care if your offense just isn't catching up to your defense. You have shown this entire regular season. You are 
in this class with the top three guys for a reason, you have to go into the playoffs to perform. There's no excuses. And that's just the facts. If they make the second round, I think it's fine from an expectation standpoint. I think that but, is that is a but, jump from last year. But Denver would be on the opposite side. That's a failure. You would have to play in the second, second round. Second round's a failure? Yes. I think it depends what happens in the second round. Does this cat have a really bad seed? series? Does Play what? OKC? Does Jokic kill yes. Gobert? One eight four five. They would play OKC in the second round. Mm. I don't know. If, you're the, the, if you're, OKC advances. And also, and listen, I think I, everyone understands OKC is a great team. You have the experience on your side in that series. You should be like, favored to I win. I feel like Minnesota has had WCF thoughts all year. They've been at the Most top definitely. of the West all year. I don't think a sec they're going to be like. I don't think they're going to be content with a second round. I think it depends how they lose in the second round. If they, they could lose make in the four WCF and five, though. nah. But I if mean, they go to seven with OKC, I'm, I'm not. I still would like, think I, if you go to seven, you would say, "Damn, we should have made the WCF." I mean, yeah, they're catching I mean, the good side of the bracket. You, you don't any, want any you, side that's not Denver's. That's that's side, what I'm so saying. Yeah, yeah. Like you don't want to catch Denver in the second round. If you're catching Denver in the second round, you know you're not going to. Let me ask you a question. Chef. As a Knicks fan, if you guys lose in the second round, success or failure? For us, you don't have to play Boston little, in the second round. It's a little different because the East is whack. That's why I'm. At, I think that's why it's a fair question mm. because I feel like if I'm a Knicks fan right now, the way the bracket is falling, you don't have to play Boston in the second round. I think you should be you expecting would be sick, we though. can make an ECF right? run. Right, that's what I'm saying. If we lose to a team we should beat, yes, I'd be. Upset. But I feel like if you Minnesota, who shouldn't you beat outside of Boston realistically? But if you Minnesota and you don't get that's Denver, you should that's, think yeah. we should make the. WCF. That's exactly my point too. If you're same Minnesota, way with OKC, we should be, OKC should exactly. go the same way. If you go mm-hmm. into that other bracket and Denver's at the top, you should think we can make the WCF. Beat we should make the WCF. Yeah, there should be should, no, there should should be no thought. OKC and Minnesota should think that. So if they lose in the second round, they should think, damn, we, we, we fucked up this I year. I just think the teams in the East have... No, I'm not comparing they, it to they the They have bigger holes. Yeah, like, I just only mean it. I, I went strictly for the Knicks because I think we all feel like their ceiling is probably an ECF. This mm-hmm. team can legitimately make mm-hmm. the ECF. We look at Minnesota. This is another team that their ceiling to us is a WCF. That's kind of why I feel it would be a disappointment if I am a Wolves fan, if our team isn't really making a chance at or taking that that leap into that WCF range. It just depends. If the Knicks play the Bucks and they're healthy, Giannis is back and they're playing like superstars mm-hmm. and Dame is tearing up the garden, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be too upset. Like it just it depends on who we lose. Like, Dame, but Dame really hasn't been doing that. I know what I'm not, saying. Like, I'd be Dame without Giannis. Dame without Giannis has been very good this year. Like if we lose to the Cavs, Pacers, Magic I'm upset. Mm-hmm. I'm upset, but I wouldn't be upset if we lose to the Heat, including I'm the Magic too, I, who's been a great should, defensive. I don't think we lose to the Heat. I, if we lose to them, I mean, we're supposed to be ahead of them. I agree. You know? I agree. And you guys have handled your business against them all season long. You, wait, you wouldn't be upset if you lose to the Heat. Not you should beat much, the Heat. No. You just called them trash for you should forty the minutes heat. last. Kind they of, they have been right. trash in the regular season. Right. So I didn't call them trash. Yes, you've called them for lack of better term. Forty minutes, Joel. For lack of better term. Like, we're kind of using... No, uh, no. Ex- I need to say, because trash is Pistons. That's Pistons. No, no, no. I that's call them trash. Not, that shouldn't be in the league. That's There's a difference. <laughs> no, that's trash. Difference. Yeah. Laugh. What do you do with trash? You throw it out. I don't know what that <laughs> even means. He said you shouldn't be out. You should be out the league. What do you do Let with trash? You, you throw it out. Should the Heat be uh, a playoff team? A playoff you team? You don't think so. Yes, they should. But... If you think, I mean, like, off of what if you think right now, last this episode, only because the, the Hawks and the Bulls don't deserve to be playoff okay, teams. That's you, why they that's deserve to be a playoff team. Team. If you think last episode was me calling the Heat trash, you're bugging. I was saying they have not lived up to the expectation. That's what I'm disappointed that's, in. That's exactly what I'm saying. That now that we've seen, trash. Now now there's no seen excuse the Knicks should not lose to the Heat. Now Realistically, Boston from the heat. should. No team should really lose to the Heat in the in the East. If I'm being dead ass, bro. The young teams, listen. The young teams, Orlando. I'm not going to disrespect I, I think them that's like okay. that. But now, nah, if you're especially if you're the Damn. Knicks I'm in not Boston, gonna put the up there. I'm not going to say. If it. you're the Knicks in Boston, you should not be sitting there like, damn, bro. The Heat really might get. I don't know. The Heat in the playoffs, they have not looked that way this this whole season. No, they haven't. But the resume in the playoffs it speaks for itself. But you said last year shit was a fluke. Nah, nah. No, 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 no. Yeah, uh, hold on, Joel. Before you say anything else, uh, let me just respond to this. Uh, you guys probably went into that Heat series thinking this shit's over. We won. Yeah, we, we won definitely. the year before. Uh, now we're even better than we were the year before that. I think this they got is, better players. To be this fair, is that is... Food. Listen, yes, but to be fair, if... We want to use hindsight. They had just won two playoff series. So shout out to them. Jimmy Butler was just going crazy. That's not the same momentum you're bringing into the first round. The Nuggets played against us and swept us. They watched us beat the Grizzlies. They watched us handle the Warriors. And they came in there and they took our lunch money. And they didn't really think twice about it. You guys should have handled the Heat. The way that the Nuggets handled the Lakers. Yeah, I mean, the Nuggets are a lot better. Do y'all not see what's happening happening in the bracket right now? The Bucs are the second seed. The Bucs right now, Giannis is hurt. 
the Heat could face the Bucks in the first round well, to be with fair, Giannis is hurt. They would have to beat Philly. Philly seven. In a one game, they could do. They well, could the beat. Bucks them. should be scared of both I, I Philly. Would, you're going in Philly or Miami. I would take Philly. Okay, but that's it's a elimination game. That's it's really a Philly. toss up. It'll so you're respecting Philly. Jimmy. But Philadelphia, they can go on a win streak these last couple of games, and they can get the, a top six seed. Would could. you take the Pacers or the Heat? The Heat. I know the Pacers just won, but I, I would take the Heat. I would say the Heat and Pacers a couple, was it last Sunday? Flip, that, was kind cheated, of, that was kind of an elimination game. If the Heat would have won that game, they would have put themselves in really good mm-hmm. position to get the sixth seed. Yeah, that was a huge game. It was. I don't think the Heat care what seed they are. No, they That's don't. That's a fucking problem. They should. They, they get all my That nuts. is a problem. It's a, it's a Gen Z, and I say Gen Z because it's our. I just our, don't think they care who they play. Basketball. They're gonna come to play anytime they. Play they anybody. came into this season better than last year. That's why I thought they'd be much better. I I, I love the development from Jovic. He's Hell been yeah. awesome. He's been Duncan Robinson. He started in the playoffs last year, but last year's Duncan Robinson yeah. compared to this. Yeah. You know th- this team is better. You know Hawke has given him some contributions as a rookie. Rozier. Rozier gives them another shot creator. They are a He's small team. Down. They are a small team, but I Ooh, think Rozier? yeah, last year they're. They're better from last year, mm-hmm. talent wise, top to bottom. Mm-hmm. I still would love them to have more big depth, which obviously Are they gonna play the Bucks or the Celtics or the Knicks. So But yeah. I'd be a terrible draw for the Knicks in the first round. You're that scared? Uh, I don't want to fa- I would want to avoid the Heat if I can. Yes. You'd rather play sorry, did you say this already? Heat or Sixers? Something about do- what who would I rather play? <laughs> yeah. I'm saying like, bro, it's something about yo, they just upset us. It's kind of exactly like, do you think Luca wants to avoid the Clippers? He wants all the he smoke. He wants that. He want to avoid shit. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Oh, you said New we're going to do passion, the storylines before we hey, get into the war. You want to get your payback right, from last no, year. Here, here's here's the, the best way that I put it with this, right? Because we're going to talk about the, the, the Mavs and Clippers. You had Jordan with the Pistons. That was the beast that Jordan had to get by. Mm. He inevitably did, and then it propelled him into that next level. You had LeBron James with the Boston Celtics. He had that beast that he had to get by. He eventually did, and then propelled him to that next level. Who's the, who's Lucas Pistons and, and Celtics? It's the Clippers. I understand he went on that WCF run already, but he's got to get past that beast, and this could propel him into that next level. You get past the, the, the team that you, you've kind of had hiccups against, even though you've played out of your mind. Similar how LeBron and, and Jordan played out of their mind against those respective teams, but your team just couldn't get it done. That's kind of how I see it in this sense, where Luke is hungry. He wants this. He he he's seen this kind of aligning for probably some weeks now, saying, "This is kind of how I get get it back on my side, get the narratives back on my side." That it, it's different now. I'm better than I was, and as good as I was then, I'm even better now. And our team is is showing it and playing the team that we couldn't beat the last two times we faced off. He's a competitor. I mean, that's what he got to do. For, for, but that's why I say so, with so the Knicks. So is Jalen Russell. So exactly. Like, like, of course, they, they're all competitive. And now you got OG. Your team's better. When you're competitive, of and course, Dante, you not want that him. challenge. You would rather avoid a dangerous challenge for later on in the playoffs, though. Mm-hmm. You talked about those LeBron Celtics series. They was going to battle in the conference finals in the second round. It wasn't the first round. I don't know. I liked I liked Boston a couple years ago when they went to the finals having to play Brooklyn round one. You go. You be able to sweep them, get them out early. Then. You see get. Beat that's why. That's why I say later. I want the Celtics to get the Heat because I feel like you get that confidence in the first round to really defeat a demon. The Celtics and Nets weren't really demons. I guess they had beat them in the previous playoffs when when Jalen Brown was hurt. Um, but you beat a a team with KD and Kyrie. That type of in the way you did it. Every game was close. You did it in the clutch. That's why I want Boston to do it against Miami. And I think for the Clippers or excuse me for the Mavericks having the Clippers isn't a bad draw too because. I don't think Luca really has to conquer the demon. He has to beat them, yes, sure. but he's just played so damn good that to me it's like, oh, yeah. listen, he could go out there, he could probably average thirty seven, and if they if the Clippers one and seven, I'd be like, I'm not shocked. You know, mm-hmm. the Clippers still have a chance. In that series, though, I think I would take the Mavericks. I, right now, how I how I see it, Mavericks in six probably. Um, the oh, Clippers that's way that Paul George been playing recently. <laughs> Paul George been playing know. really well. Kawhi's been banged up, hasn't played the last few games. The Clippers have been playing better because they had that stretch a few weeks ago, um, maybe a month ago at this the point. Defense no, was just terrible. They were really struggling, um, and they were having those quotes. We had this, the topic about Ty Lue Being calling soft. the team soft. You had Harden saying we don't know our identity. They've definitely turned it around, and you want to see that going into the playoffs. But the way Luka and Kyrie have been playing offensively, and I know over there was a 16, 18 games, number one defense. We've gone through that schedule at times, but regardless of who you're playing, to do it consistently for, you know, talking about quarter of the season, a little bit less, you know, if I'm rounding up there and being nice, 18% in the season, I don't think it's nothing. Um, and having Derek Jones Jr. in the lineup, who's, you know, super athletic, of course, Gafford and P.J. Washington, and Derek Lively's been missing a good portion of these games as well. Hopefully he could get back too. So 
I really like the way that that Dallas has been playing to finish the season. Clippers, you can make that same argument, but I feel like the body of work we've seen over the last month, post-trade deadline, post-All-Star break from Dallas, uh, to me, I, I said it, I think I'd have them over OKC right now. I think they're the second best team in the West. So if you're the Bucks, you'd want to see the Heat in the first round? I don't think they care. It's either Heat or Philly for them. I would rather the Heat in this sense. But Joel and, oh no, I understand. Against the Heat. If the I round. if I'm the Bucks, I would rather this year, I would rather play the Heat for the fact of I don't want to play Embiid. I don't want to play Embiid. If the I'm Sixers top, have historically played if well I'm a against top us. Team in, a, in any conference, I don't duck. I me personally, I wouldn't duck anybody. Oh, for sure. So but I'm just saying if you had a preference. I'm answering a question. I don't really have a preference. Of course, I mean, you don't have control over who you're ducking or you're not. I think for, if fact. anything, teams are looking for things for legacy purposes. So I, I would want probably Miami in this legacy purpose mm-hmm. thing. Like I would want the, the better team to put on a better le- better legacy. But I feel like the Lakers, you wouldn't want to face the Nuggets the in the Sixers, first round. I think the Sixers are better than the Heat. Sixers are better than the Heat when healthy. Correct. Easy. Yes. All right, that's why I say if I'm Milwaukee this season, I would rather play the Heat. That's, but that's regular season. I don't like I feel, playoff time. I feel is as different. If it's a different energy. I agree. This I mean, is the what Heat it, have shown that. This was so weird about the Heat, though, is we really cannot judge them off of just solely regular season. I agree. There, there has to get a couple attribute points added on. Yeah, they almost. Blew where playoff. was this? When yeah, we just had wasn't. this I know. topic I last episode. Uh, what do you mean? I told you I'm disappointed in what they've been this regular season. That's a fact. I'm just they're admitting better. I don't really yeah, they, but you don't really, yeah, exactly. Season. You don't really care then. With them, it's always going to be like that, though. But that doesn't mean I can't expect more for them in a regular season. But if you don't they care should about be it, a why top seed. It? Yeah. <laughs> because they they have lost a bunch of games this year they should have won. I they heard. was fully healthy and they lost to the Wizards this year. That happens. I mean, they have they have blue games that they should clearly have won. But we just had like and a thirty minute say. If it was just some quick, we went in and out five minutes. The biggest okay, thing, but the biggest thing we about it topic. is Jimmy Butler. He's not a number one, um, and he's a number two in a regular season. He cannot carry God players. Said that. He cannot carry players in a regular season to uh-huh. a bunch of wins. Okay, because he's coasting. He he's letting everybody else take a ton of shots. He there are games where he's on the floor and Hawkins is taking twenty shots too. That can't happen. He so doesn't is, take over. So enough. is Kawhi not a number one? What Kawhi is number right? one. Well, right, I'm asking because in the regular season he's kind of close. Has Jimmy man. Butler ever had a regular season as good as 2017 Kawhi Leonard? Probably no. Not. Okay, then at the end of the season. I mean, Clippers. I think he's saying this, I'm saying this at year this Kawhi point, Leonard. Yes, well, this, this year Kawhi Leonard has been far better, better than Jimmy yeah. Butler. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean he's yeah. been a lot healthier. Yeah. Even if Jimmy yeah. Butler was that healthy, he wouldn't be doing what Kawhi's doing. Last year when Jimmy Butler was healthy, he was unbelievable. He didn't have a better year than Kawhi. Last year, Jimmy Butler's last year versus Kawhi. This year, Kawhi's. Listen, back. Kawhi's a better player than Jimmy yeah. Butler. And he elevates more in the playoffs. I too. only say that for conversation purposes. When you say Jimmy Butler coasts in the regular season to get to the playoffs, to be that number one, to be that playoff riser, where you look at Kawhi Leonard, that's kind of been the story of his Clippers tenure, where he's kind of just get me ready for the playoffs. I ramp up in the playoffs, and I'm. 30 times better than I am in the regular season. So Jimmy uh, Butler's coasting is different, though. Jimmy Butler's coasting is like 21, 22 a game. But Jimmy also, these last couple of seasons, have dealt with injury. Like Kawhi, I, his first year with the Raptors averaged 27. He played 60 games. Mm-hmm. With the Clippers, first year, he averaged 27. Second year, he averaged 25. Uh, this past season... He's at 23 this year, if he I'm was not at mistaken. He was at 24. Now he's at 24. 23.7. Round it up to 24. Up, that's fine. So he's always been like around the 24 to 28 points. And we're going to see, but we're going to see Kawhi in the playoff time. Wouldn't be surprised if it's 28, 30 points. Because that's I'd just be surprised what he does. if it's 30. I'd be surprised. Okay, if it's 30. I'm 28. I said 28 to 30. Kawhi, it, it's Kawhi Leonard. He rises more in the playoffs than Jimmy. Probably. Overall, yes. Yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty I mean, easily. Kawhi's so, in a very, yeah, he's yeah. an exclusive class. He's in the top 25 player all time. Yeah. I get that. When Kawhi's been healthy, I think he is, yeah, he's, you know, he's number one option. I don't think that Jimmy Butler can carry a team in a regular season. I don't. He did it. I mean, they were the one seed. I was gonna, and he did it the year that you guys beat them in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. He did it in the bubble. In the bubble, I think they were a fifth, three, top fifth, three, fifth seed. I think were they fifth seed? Yeah, I think so. The, when we beat them, we were the they were the one seed in twenty twenty two. No, no, that I know. Yeah. They were the fifth seed because the Raptors were the second seed. Facts. That, year. that was that was the year that Pascal was. Uh, they were forty four and twenty nine. It was, it was a good it's a record. Great record. It would have been a, if this was a longer season. This was longer season. It probably would be a fifty-one yeah. team. Yeah, they had a chance to compete for a top, a higher seed than that. No, but I just don't think he can carry a team in a, in a regular season because they should be a higher seed. They're a better team than last year. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. 
right? No, it doesn't. Okay, I agree. No, it doesn't. It just matters for purposes of just who you play, you know, in the first round. But if they don't care about who they play, then I guess it doesn't really matter. I don't think they do at all. I mean, Jimmy has made that very clear to the point where people are clowning Jimmy. But it is concerning that you are just getting in by by such a little margin of error. I mean, last year they lost their first playing game. Mm-hmm. You know, so that was a team that they had to win the second play to even get in. this year. Exactly. You know, I just don't feel like, why give yourself that little room for error them. when you're better than that? They can't. They probably could. If Trey Young's back, Trae maybe. Young's That's what I'm saying. That's if what I'm saying. If I, was, if I was the Knicks, I would not want to face the Heat in the first round, though. I'd rather draw somebody else. Why, why face them right out the gate? <clears throat> it's going to be tough. Yeah, I'd rather face an easier opponent. Would you rather face Philly or Heat? <laughs> it don't even matter, bro. I like that answer. It don't even matter. I love that answer. It don't matter. Give they're, me whoever. Because they're really in the same tier to me also. It's like that. playoff. The Knicks teams. didn't have just as good as a regular season. Bruns didn't have this good as a regular season. Just go out there in the first round and be scared. Oh, no anybody, doubt. Bro. It would be disappointing. That's yeah, why nah, I don't want to nah. face them. I don't want to give myself reason to be disappointed. So, no, I wouldn't want to face them. But if you went we, in the first round, then say you playing Milwaukee in the second round. Now you got some confidence going in. We just beat the Heat. We just beat Joel Embiid. If we lose in the be. second round to any team, I will still be disappointed. That's what, it's yeah, an L. If it's you one, were disappointed last year. Unless it's to Boston, the heat. you yeah, shouldn't be. Should so. be expected. I'll still be disappointed. But I will understand it. Okay, you know, they was the better team. You know, I'm be honest, bro. You shouldn't look at the Bucks being like, they're the better team. If they, they outplay you guys, they then okay, that's, that's something. Is he going to be playing? Who knows? I mean, he got you know, a calf injury. You know, He's out for the rest of the regular season. I tried. I had that whole monologue about Clippers, Mavs, because that was supposed to be the next topic, and then we just we had I thought that's what we were going to do also. I did, yeah. I did think we were going to do okay. that. Okay. I, I was like, did, am I tripping? Did I just – I said this whole shit when we talked about the Heat. I was no, like, no, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Oh. Okay. okay. Well, my part's done. I know. <laughs> okay. Hey, Dallas don't got to go no more. <laughs> okay. If you want me to get mine out the way, I mean, I got the Mavericks in six or seven. Uh I'm excited six for this or, Which one is it? Six or seven? I'm going to go Mavericks in six. Uh, I am excited for this series. I'm excited for Luka Doncic after a year of not making the playoffs to be in his first playoff series and, and play how he plays. It's always a treat to watch him play in the playoffs. He's it's genuinely just amazing. Ecstatic. He's an amazing playoff performer. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember in his first playoff appearance in the bubble, I was at a family cookout and everybody was outside chilling. I was in the, in the, in the kitchen because I got a TV in my kitchen. I was watching a bubble playoff game, and that was the game that he hit the game winner over Reggie Jackson, and I was jumping with joy. I mean, yeah, he could give me those type of moments. The Clippers have beat them, but I feel like this is the best Mavericks roster that Luka has had. Yeah, throw those games out the window. So it doesn't even matter. Those, those games. For me, it's like, you know, you're going from having Dwight Powell being your backline defender to now it's Daniel Gafford or it's Derek Lively. You still have the versatility in your lineups to play small by having Maxi out there and other wings. I, I think Derek Jones Jr. has been a pleasant surprise this year. He's really elevated his game. He's a great defender, and if he hits his three-point shots consistently, he's doing some good things, and he's a good cutter. And again, P.J. Washington, you know, another wing defender. These guys aren't all level, NBA-level defenders, but they are serviceable ones who give them size at that spot. And then you just have Kyrie and Luka doing what they do. It's just so tough. I just don't know how the Clippers are going to guard this team. I don't think the Mavericks are going to – they don't have the individual guys to throw at the Clippers per se. I think more so with them it's going to be how they scheme up their team defense. But with the Mavs, it's nobody can guard Luka one-on-one. And then if you want to blitz him – now you're playing four on three on a back end. It's worked twice. No, oh, it's worked but with worse players. You know, now you Tim have Hardaway Ky- Jr. still there. Yeah, uh, he is, you know, but now you have Just Kyrie offensively. making decisions. Offensively, Kyrie, Kyrie was there for one of those losses. Uh, one of them, I think that's when Kyrie did have that leg injury. But at the same time, offensively, it's still similar where the still guys shooters. that you worry about, Luca. Kyrie, where the Mavericks are better post-trade deadlines, obvious, defensive side of the ball. Now you have some interior presence with Gafford, of course, to now aid alongside Derek Lively. We're seeing Gafford have a, a, the primary uh, majority of the defensive responsibility in that regard. And then you mentioned P.J. Washington, his ability to just be a body there and, and just play that level of defense, just give them another player for, for that personnel. We mentioned Derek Jones already, Dante Exum. That's another one that I feel like, let me not slight on the offensive side. He's been shooting the ball excellently. But again, offensively, it's pretty similar. 
You worried about Luca. You worried about Kyrie. And of course, you have to respect the jump shot of a Dante Exum. And if Tim Hardaway's on, of course, you have to respect him. But he's been so inconsistent that you really don't know what you're going to get. I feel like where this series is going to to be decided is on the defensive side of the ball. If the Dallas Mavericks continue to play that level of defense that we've seen over the last 18 games where they have been the number one defense in the National Basketball Association. So that's really what it's going to come down to for me uh, because we've seen moments where in this run, you have the win versus the Nuggets, you have the two wins versus the Kings, you have this win versus the Miami Heat who they're there. And I'll, I'll throw the Rockets there because down the stretch of the season, they played some really solid basketball, but Kind of the 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 thing with the, you look at the 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 Heat and you look at the Rockets. Those two teams are primarily based off defense. Their offense hasn't been that great, but against those two teams, Dallas Mavericks has played some great defense. Against the Kings, they're obviously known for being a better offense. Their defense hasn't been nearly as bad as last season's, but their offense isn't nearly as good as it was last year. Also, we're talking about a top, the best offense in basketball, and this year they're around the twelfth, thirteenth best best offense. So. The Nuggets automatically an amazing win, but these rest of the wins, I feel like I still need to see them in a matchup like this one versus the Clippers where their offense has been pretty damn great all season long. You kind of had that little lull mid-March, early April. Well, let me not say early April, mid-March, but now they're starting to figure things out as of recent. Paul George has really come on as of late. Kawhi has been dealing with the right knee inflammation, but at the same time, I feel like I could be looking at that as a bonus where Kawhi got some rest before the playoffs started. So that's another thing that I feel like it could be that his knee is injured, but this also could be a little bit of load management. Didn't meet the requirement for for, for the All-NBA team. Has played the most game that he's played in years since he was a a San Antonio Spur. Now he's rested for this series. It's going to come down to this Mavs defense for me. Luka's going to be amazing. I even think that Kyrie Irving's going to be amazing. But it's really going to come down, is this Dallas Mavericks defense what we've seen? And to me, I still don't know. I'm going to go with what I do trust. And... And that is Luka Doncic. I do believe that Luka Doncic is good enough to win this playoff series and overcome that demon. So I'm going to go with the Dallas Mavericks, but I think it's a hell of a series in seven. I don't even know if like it's really about the defense. I think maybe in spurts and moments, but... Well, because the Clippers' strength is their offense. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I just... It's so tough to guard Dallas now because they have better center play. When you're getting blitz, you're usually runners. kicking it out to the wing or you're kicking it out to the center because now he can make decisions in that short role. I just feel like they've gotten so much better with Gafford and Lively. There's such a huge upgrade over uh, Dwight Powell. I trust Dallas more. I think this is a series for Kyrie Irving to finally right some of his wrongs in the playoffs uh, with the Clippers. You trust Kawhi and how he's going to play. I don't trust James Harden, and uh, they have been playing better recently. Kawhi has missed some of these games, and is giving Harden and Paul George more freedom. But now when Kawhi comes back and they go back to the roles, more so James Harden, how is he going to play? Because I think James Harden getting hounded by somebody like Derrick Jones Jr. at the point of attack, it's really going to bother him. So Derrick is guarding Harden? I would put Derrick Jones Jr. on Harden to stop the ball. So who's guarding Kawhi? PJ. And then who's guarding PJ? Kyrie? This series really can go either way, man. Another thing, Russ is back yeah. too. Yeah. Russ on defensive yeah. side of the ball is going to be I'm huge. Truly waiting for this. No, answer. no, there's no answer. There's no answer. No, I would. Pro- ah, damn. Fuck. I would. Damn. Actually, I don't know. Maybe yeah, Kyrie might have probably to guard. Kyrie on Harden. No, Kyrie. Oh, the way he's been playing. Yeah. Oh, dear. You, you might have to do that or Luca. Because ah. you need size. You need size. Uh, but I think if you put Luca on PG, that is 25 points a game. I, don't, I think Derek has to guard PG. Derek can't guard Kawhi because he doesn't have the physical strength. Mm-hmm. PJ is probably going to go there the most. Um, you might have to just trust Luka and Kyrie on Harden with the way his offense has been working. You know, I know he's can get into those moments, but with the way PG and Kawhi have been playing lately, you just want your best defender stopping them. But then it, it's Harden also is so much stronger than Kyrie. Yeah, it's tough. It, Kyrie's going to have put, to guard. I, w- I think Luka on Paul George in moments where – He's not the primary ball handler. I think it's going to be a lot of switching. If Luka's on Paul George down the stretch of the game, we're seeing a lot of PG. I think the thing with Luka is that he has the strength, the upper body strength, to physically not get blown past by. But I don't even mean in terms of post-ups and blown bys. Just he could straight up size up. 
shoot right over the top of him. Pick and roll works too. That I too. Think, I think Luca is going to get called out and Kyrie, no matter who they're guarding. You're this Kawhi get the be ball, tough, bring man. him up. Paul George got the ball, bring him up. I don't like the matchups are going to matter, of course. Um, and I guess we'll see how hard Dallas tries to keep those matchups. But I can't imagine the Clippers going to their series how they play offense, not saying let's get these guys in action. Unless you play small, you have Maxi out there, and now Maxi guards one of them. But that's the other alternative. Then that's the thing. That's what. Because, like, if they do go small, you're kind of taking Gafford and Lively out the series. And that was your big upgrade at the deadline. You didn't, you didn't, you were losing series because you were going small against this team. And that's the Clippers going small against the Clippers is probably the worst mistake. They're one of the best small ball teams in the league. Um, the thing with Harden, though, is that you don't want to, with Luka, you can funnel Paul George to the basket and you can funnel him to where help is. You don't, don't want to do, yeah. you don't want to do that with Harden because Harden's a better passer. Yeah. So if Harden gets to that second level, it's going to be a lob or a kick out for three. With Paul George, you trust his passing a little less to the point where Luka can guard him. He doesn't have to be ultra aggressive. And even if he gets blown past, you have Lively or Gafford in the back line disrupting But if things. I am the Clippers, and that is the matchup, I'm, I'm okay with that. Because, un- I mean, you should be. But unless James Harden is just sitting in a corner for the series, which I don't think is going to happen, no, he'll be on ball. Luka should have gone He's the one probably sitting. He's the better well, spot well, up, sure. What James Harden means to that team as a playmaker, I feel like one of the two defenders got to be on him and the other one got to be on Kawhi. Here's the thing. Um, obviously, I have Clippers in seven. That's no I was doubt ask in my for your mind. prediction. I wasn't yeah, sure. Yeah, no, no, no. That's obvious. I think you throw out the first three games this year. That was before the deadline. Earlier in the year, the first game, that was Harden's third game as a Clipper. And then the next two games were in November, December. Shit doesn't matter. These are two completely different teams. Um, And you mentioned that both teams have kind of been on a little hot streak. I think, for me, I'm leading the Clippers because, and this is only if Kawhi plays. You know, Kawhi has a right knee inflammation. They haven't said too much information. Mm-hmm. Ty Lue has said he will be ready by the playoffs and won't bother him. But it is concerning a little bit that they haven't talked too much about it. But if they are resting him, dope to me. You know, so as long as Kawhi is healthy, I have the Clippers. You just have seen from this last stretch, you know, against the Magic, against the Hornets. Um, then Kawhi doesn't play for the last six games. They go out, they beat Denver, you know, which was a big win with Paul George and Harden. They go out, they spank the Jazz, don't care about that. They come back 30 down to the Cavs. They go out there and they handle Phoenix. Like, we're talking about big-time wins in crucial moments on the road, at home, down big against the Joker who just destroyed Minnesota. We talk about the team that went out there without their best player, and they uh, performed in that game. Paul George was amazing in those games. Harden's been dealing with an injury, but he's been fine. You know, guys like T-Man has stepped up over the last couple games. Norman Powell, Westbrook has been back. He's been the energy and the juice for them. So I just think with the role, like this for me is a role player type series because I think the stars of the stars, you know, you got Harden, PG, Kyrie, Kawhi, and these boys, like Hall of Fame players. These players are all going to play amazing. If you don't, the thing with me is if you don't trust Harden, I don't think you could trust Kyrie because Kyrie has not performed up to that level in a long time. Harden has had his moments. PG has had his moments. The most consistent out the three lately in the playoffs has been Paul George, but these guys all are inconsistent. Luka and Ka- Kawhi kind of cancel them each other out in the sense of we know they're both going to show up. That's just never going to be a doubt in any of our minds. So for me, it's coming down to the role players. Like, can you have a big Norman Powell team man game? Can you have a big PJ Washington, Daniel Gafford game? You know, can they step up defensively? And I, I you know, Ty Lu said he's been gearing up for this matchup for a week and some change. So he's been wanting this too. He's been ready for this. For me, I think I trust a little bit more in team man and Norman Powell and Westbrook and what they can do. I trust in Zubak the way he's been playing this year. Um, I trust in the, the defensive scheme that Ty Lue can cook up. He's cooked up some solid ones as of late against this team. I know it's a better team, but I just trust him a little bit more. And I trust what the Clippers have been doing lately. Harden and PG have been getting their groove back, and that's going to be perfect in time for if Kawhi is healthy to come back and beat Kawhi. Now, let me say this real quick. Y'all really thought I was taking the Mavericks? You Didn't you say Mavs? Y'all really thought I was taking the Mavericks. You know, I did this purposely. Cause I, I know, thought, I thought you just convinced them. Cause I know, cause I know, Mavs <laughs> yeah, I fans. I now I know Mavs fans are watching, and they just heard me say Mavericks in seven, and they're already on their keyboards. They're typing away. Oh, Mister Flip aside. Oh, oh wow, keep that same energy. I'm not jinxing. I'm just playing with the fans. <laughs> you have this brand. The Clippers. Deep. The Clippers. <laughs> the Clippers are going to win this series. It will be in six or seven games. He might have jinxed it. And that's solely because of the Mavericks defense. Cause I still don't believe in it. Six or seven. Which uh, one is going to be? Seven. I don't think it'll okay. six. 
No, I, I think really it is. Don't think I'm it with you there. I think it goes seven. I think it does. It does. It is going to be decided in that seventh game in LA. Uh, I think Luka Doncic is going to play great in that game, but again, it will not matter because I just think offensively the Clippers just have a little bit more to them. Going with the Clippers, and I'm, I, I did this on purpose, Mavs fans. I don't let you down. I keep that same energy. Like you guys better keep that same energy if the Mavericks do lose this series. That's all I am saying. But I hope I had you in the first half because I know you guys were typing your hearts away. And I can't wait to see those preemptive comments. How many comments? Because I'm going to read them. Over <laughs> 20. I say over 20. I think we'll get the comment that we're actually glad Drew picked the Clippers because he's been so wrong on the Mavericks all you'll year. You'll get that one. It's you'll, you'll, you'll get that one. If, if LA loses game one, you'll get added so oh, much. Trust yeah. me, it'll be bad. Oh, I'm not new to this NBA yeah. uh, agenda. Don't, don't go down, down over two now. Don't go down over two. Are going to send a video? Yeah. No. The Clippers have done that over too much. (laughs) If the Clippers go, if the Clippers go up two zero, I am I'm learning from my co-hosts. You stay quiet. You wait till the series is over. Uh, Listen, we kind of saw with the Dallas Mavericks in that series too, where they went up two zero. Hell, they went up three two. Had a chance to close out. Couldn't get the job done. Kawhi, man. Uh, No, Kawhi was awesome because again, Luka Doncic was great in those games. It just wasn't enough. This time around, I do think Fourth Dallas quarter, is Somebody better. got a little that, bit more energy. Correct. It, I mean, you look at that game 7-2. Kind of just was Role player one-sided stuff for that. sure. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. I, I think either both teams have a, definitely a big chance to win. I think both teams are going to be a threat come next round, whether it's OKC or wherever they it'll play. It'll be a good series. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great series. I think it's, it could be the best series of the first round for yeah. sure. Those four or fives Should usually be. are most entertaining. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, they're I just, the most uh, yeah. cl- the ones the that, the one out east this year. I don't know. The one out east this year, I don't know. Now, you know, it's I'm like actually... Cleveland, Orlando. You, you talk about yeah. Ty Lue cooking up a defensive game plan. I like Jason Kidd cooking up a defensive you, game plan. So you're plan. back in. On Jason Kidd, yeah. I think he he is a this good defense coach. They got, I, they got the personnel, He's so I respect that thirds. against who you're playing against, against years? competition you should be handling. How long Jason been there? Three. Three years, right? Two two years were, you know, pretty solid teams. But first year, no, the one, the one first year, year they went, went to the WCF. Yeah. Last year, their team simply was not good. First half of this season, the, the personnel wasn't all there, yeah. but post trade deadline, he's adjusted well. I give credit where credit is due. I just think it's an effort thing. Like the, mm-hmm. the, the moment that Dallas started playing harder on defense, they became a top 10 defense. And that's what they need to do. They need to play hard, and they will play hard in the playoffs. When they beat the Suns, Jason Kidd was double teaming the hell out of Devin Booker and, Kyle, and uh, Chris Paul. I, I'm curious to see whether or not he's going to go and double Kawhi. Because I felt like in the Mavericks' previous matches with the Clippers, they just was letting Kawhi go to work. They wasn't really doubling him like Norman that. Norman Powell in the corner. You got P- PG on the corner. You got uh, shooters the side, and you got Norman's been playing amazing the all season. Because yeah. one thing about Kawhi, Kawhi isn't the best at handling blitzes. Nah. He's not the best. So mm-hmm. if you well, he's the really best trap him. Them shits. Yeah. I mean, if, if you are if you are constantly sending doubles at him and making him become a passer and read the floor, I feel like that's when you can play into the advantage of the series a little bit. So I'm excited. You know, I think the Mavericks going to win. Uh, you know, it's the MVP, Luka Doncic. It would be very disappointing for both of these teams. One of these teams is going to lose, and it's going to be a very disappointing season. Man, don't lose. That's all I'm going to say. The Mavericks. vibes are with the Mavs, though. I mean, you see how they are with the Mavs. You see how they how are, the vibes are with, the Mavs? with each other as teammates. The vibes are definitely with the, the Mavs. Vibes are they have the great the white hope. Did you see the practice before the Suns game with the Clippers? I didn't. Where'd you see it? Bro, they have, on, on you, the Clippers have been cooking the last like, week and is, a half. Why, why are we lying about the vibes? What is, what is, what is, I mean, because the Mavs has been like 20 You know games. what it is? I said it. It's the great white hope. No, it's not. Because the vibes was up when Kyrie hit the game winner against the Nuggets. Uh, that also Everybody helps. Was yeah, Kyrie Irving was awesome. Crazy. That was crazy. Kyrie Irving has brought a level of peace yep, against, and stability to this against team. Against the Hornets, the Jazz, I mean, Jazz, they're saying, twice, they're saying Daniel Gafford is better than or just as good as Tyson Chandler. Who said that? Mavs fans, yo, that NFL. was hilarious. <laughs> now Mavs fans ain't saying. I was nah, just asked that. That question. was just yeah. Nah, yeah, that was a pretty easy answer though. Mm-hmm. But uh, now the vibes are definitely up with the Mavericks though. I think the vibes. Are they have up. More, like if we were doing this by two K, their team chemistry is like a ninety. Clippers are like a seventy. That's just okay. wrong. No, it's not wrong. You, you got to think wrong? the season long for the How Clippers. How is that just wrong? Not Clippers are like 70? Clippers are 80. 70s Clippers are 80, 85. Yeah, like Mavs are like 90, 95. Crazy. Recently, the way post trade deadline Mavs are There's like There's nothing top wrong five, with a coach calling out the team. That low key speaks more to chemistry. That's more to chemistry. When your coach is allowed and able to do that, and your players rise up. James Harden contested Kawhi's three point shot. That was hilarious. That was hilarious. You didn't laugh? No, that would boost up team chemistry. You think so? That would boost up team Oh. No, that would be like, like what would boost it if he made Drew, it? Kawhi full. Yeah, Drew, yeah. let me ask you a question. How many times have you seen Kawhi laugh outside of this year? Oh, shit, or Kawhi man. cheer for his teammates last outside time? of this year? Toronto. 
So what are we talking about vibes here? We're just lying here. It's just the chemistry is so. No, no. It says, listen, the vibes. Kawhi is on the bench geeking up. He's you're over never here bringing an example. That. Vibes are feelings. They're not examples. Vibes are feelings. I think they're, they're both. You get the feeling with the Mavs. Oh, they they like each other. Like, like last night when Kyrie was on the floor. Have you watched the, in the Clippers, last eight you, don't, games? you don't get How many that Clippers vibe? games have you watched? Like, oh, this team. Really How many Clippers games like have you watched in the last eight games? I've watched about four of them. So you watched the, the Cavaliers game. game. The, the, the Suns vibes one. were there. The, the Suns game the was. Suns game, the vibes were the there. Suns, the Suns game. The vibes was low. There. The Suns game, the vibes were low. Because you're a Suns fan. The Suns were sticking up. That's why the vibes were low. The vibes was low. No, that vibes is crazy. The Suns game, the vibes were lit. When yeah. you're a Clippers guy, if you're a, if you're a yeah. Suns fan down forty, obviously the vibes are low as shit. The arena was booing Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. Denver game vibes were lit, I'm like you it. just beat the Joker. Yeah. What, what, like what are Paul we doing? Here? What are we doing here? We're, uh, listen, man, if y'all want to congratulate Deuce for beating the Rockets and the Jazz twice and the Spurs, congratulations. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not tripping. We'll see y'all when we see y'all. They beat the Nuggets, bro. Who? The Mavs, Mavs too. So did the I know, but so did the, so did the Mavs. Did it without. Kawhi, right? Kawhi, big Leonard. Mm. No, but that win versus the Maver- for the Mavericks against the Nuggets, hey, amazing. Arguably the best win of their season. And the Rockets was on a win streak. And the Mavs shut they that shit down. Did we all honestly They made think- a comeback, too. We, we, that was the second game. That was, I know. Yeah. Second game, they made a comeback. Congrats. The first game was against was the win streak. Clippers beat the Suns. I actually whipped them. Okay. It's pretty bad. The Suns could, could lose to a wemby oh. Spurs team oh, every night. We don't know what they're going to do. The Mavs haven't had a bad loss in a while. Yeah, they had a few great wins. They haven't had, oh yeah, they've had some great wins, but they haven't had any really bad losses recently. That is okay. Let's see. Sixteen, let's what about. sixteen and two in your last eighteen? No, they they've beaten who they should be, and yeah. again, that's not a knock. That's a respect. That's what you you do. do that, you do what you have to do, and that's exactly you what go on a done. sixteen and two stretch. That's how you go from a playing team to a playoff lock. Yeah, their only losses against the Warriors in OKC. They've beaten the Pistons, the Heat twice, the Bulls, and that game for for OKC. Denver. I'm pretty sure you said Luka didn't play. Mm-mm. No, it was just Kyrie as yeah. Mm-hmm. They beat the Jazz, they beat the Spurs, they beat the Kings. And twice. beat the Warriors without Luka too. Mm-hmm. They beat they lost with Luka. Let's, let's just don't bring that game. <laughs> no need. It's no need. I don't know why you do that because they, they you actually you know what you said prior to the meetings? You said they would sweep. You lied. They almost did. They didn't almost did not. The, the fourth quarter was close. The Warriors almost game. swept if I can say that then. Okay. So then what are you talking about? Well, you did a sweep. Yeah, because I, I never you. thought we would sweep. Okay. I thought it would be a split. Oh, I thought the Mavs would sleep. I, I really foolish. believe that. No, yeah, I know, it's something wrong. No, with it's you. because they're one of the best teams in the West. Are the Warriors about to go out there and make a run? Listen, man. Anything you said possible? this is going to be the underdog. Listen, man. We get the AFC. We're locked in, baby. <laughs> so you play Nuggets round one? Oh, we're fucked. Yeah, I think that's four yeah. games. No, respect Steph. He's actually never got swept in his life. My, this would be the, the first, first time. Everything. It, I this think it would be the first time. Well, of course, you would say that, Boston fan. Cleaves you guys. Um, I don't we know why you would say that. I just think the Nuggets are better. And you have well, no answer for from Obama era, bro. It'll be tough, man. Sweep? I'm, I, j- I, think I he give you one. the respect of five because he's Steph. Yeah, I respect that. That's the ceiling. He'll get one. <laughs> Maybe. Is he Tatum? He doesn't need oh to be. God. He's Tatum actually got better. One. Barely. He got one. one. Huh? Against Brooklyn. <laughs> five. <laughs> Drop oh, 50. I mean, that Denver was better than them. Huh? Denver was better. That big three... Nets team was oh yeah, it's, mm. you, no your Celtics team was worse. That's the real. Problem. Oh yeah, yeah. Romeo that, was, that was the main problem. Shout out to Romeo. Yeah, no, nah, we get eight, five games. Steph have forty one game. Get us one in chase. Call it a day after the next game. Ain't right. no game where Steph got forty and Jokic don't got thirty nine. Yeah. I didn't say he wouldn't. We just won't win. Jamal Murray gonna cook him too. Cook who? No. Cook Steph. Easy. Easy. Let me ask you a question. Got it. <laughs> what does Jokic do to Draymond? Or how does Draymond defend against Jokic if you feel like they played before? I but I'm I'm just he asking. doesn't he doesn't do bad. I'll be honest, Jokic's Jokic is gonna get whatever he but wants. But clutch time, my boy Dre straps it. He's still been elite defense. He got a help. He got a center now. Yeah, he does. He clutch time, Jokic is still gonna get whatever the hell he wants. Bro. Clutch time, Draymond is Draymond. I know you don't watch much bowl outside of Boston, but I'm gonna I, let I you watched, know I've actually you. watched a ton of Warriors basketball this year. Oh uh, cap. No, I, I have. Who's our third best player? Mm, probably on the season, Kaminga. Wrong. Trace Jackson Davis, Idiot. man. Come on. Was, We've spoken about it. Ball, We've bro. spoken no, about I mean, I want, I, when Trace gets in the game and he gets his spurts, he starts yeah. now, buddy. This is Ribs by How many minutes? Talking. What's his minutes per no, game? No, Trace Jackson Davis. Is he, is he 20 minutes per it's game? He's not four. stamped the it's third three, best four. No, he's not 20. Night, he's not 20 minutes. He's a rookie. I don't, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, I think over the course season, he's been the third best player. This is moments. I would say Trace is. I mean, I'd trace him on my old rookie team. Yo, I would say he's probably Clay's fourth, maybe. Recently. Clay has been cooking. I'm Clay's been playing back. better, he's though. He's been yeah. cooking recently. Hey, don't You're catch it. <laughs> <laughs> don't catch us. Hey, man, we catch uh, Minnesota, though. 
Y'all ain't doing shit. Fourth quarter, all we need to do is keep it close. Y'all, Y'all ain't, ain't nobody, nothing. bro. Shut we, up. we know the Warriors ain't on shit, man. Win a ring in this era. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus. You're do time. something outside of 07. I, I have, I have, Please. I have rings in front of me. You're All your rings behind you, buddy. You don't have anything in front of you. You have nothing. You've do. done nothing. You got rings. Like, you just keep. Like, You're, like, never going to see another championship from You Steph might again. never see one. I will. When? This year, next year, the year after, I'm fucking three feet. You say it every year. We no should, we should have at least one this year. <laughs> it sounds like LeBron and D Wade, bro. I hope you guys get one though. I really do. Not one, not two, not three, not three, not, not four, four, not five. You better pray you end up with one. Don't fold this. You shit, need bro. one, man. Oh, don't you worry, man. Bro, I would lose <laughs> down three zero to eight. To eight I'll be honest. Shit, if like, it's not this year, bro, when? That's what I'm when? saying. If they don't win this Joel, year, Joel, when, honestly, answer the question. Like, let's just say, for your sake, God forbid, uh, <laughs> the Boston Celtics don't win this season. What the fuck do we do? I, I mean, the thought hasn't even gone through my head, so I don't even know. That's what your problem. You. Like, <laughs> just not really in my realm right now. Just had Next one of the year, best regular season of all time. Do or die. That's what it is. They don't win this year. It's going back to back. It's going to be lit. Oh man, back can't wait. To, back to back, man. That's what he said. One of the his. Historic regular seasons ever. Don't fall the over. Celtics. Don't got to worry about us, man. Like one of the top. Got what? fucking eighth seeds at the table. Hey, hey seeds, I'm not fucking talking. Fourth hey, seeds. 2020, 2022. I'm, yeah, it's just like fucking a decade old. Damn I'll be man. honest, brother. Sorry, you can't girl. speak until you get one. You really can't. Like, honestly. I just, listen, I'm just, you know what? You guys have had for, we've been friends for a long time. You guys have had fucking 10, plus 15, 20 years damn near for LeBron of them doing their thing. Your time's up, fellas. Like, I'm sorry you guys have had it. We yeah, made it to the same round last year. What are you talking you about? You can do it this year. You went down 03 to an eighth seed. You went down 04 and got out. He's not a flex. No, what are we doing? I'm not flexing. I'm not flexing. I'm not flexing ECFLs or finals. I'm saying you guys have seen all your contract. I'm saying easy, easy, easy. I'm saying you were wrong about that. Just like you were wrong about Jalen Brown. Just like you were wrong about Joe Mazzula. We can keep going if you want. Oh, Jalen Brown, the contract. Jack, Joe Mazzula, you were wrong? clowning him after last series. He said he was after a bad game defender. seven, defender. That there he was. And now he's all in the level defender. Yeah, I haven't said a word this year. So yeah, what was I wrong? wrong? You, what was wrong? you know what? I'm happy because you, you've been wrong about the Celtics a lot this year. So you probably don't think we're going to chip. Oh Nothing God. would be wrong about. You're lying. You're no, lying. You, you're you were lying. out on Mazzula. You were out on Jalen Brown. No, 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 no. Said that Christian Wood was better than Derek White. That was last year. Yeah, I was wrong wrong a lot about them. I was wrong, but I was right about Jalen Brown last year. Fact. That was a fact. Jalen Brown was not the same defender, and he fought against Miami. He was that hurt. is a fact. I was also he right was that Miami would beat you guys. That is a fact. Yeah, you got that. Yeah, I know. I get a lot of things. Yeah, that's Just like, like you're like one and six. When the Warriors beat y'all, Congrats. I was right that again. That shit's three years old. And now you got one year, which you better pray to Allah. <laughs> you get it right. You better pray to the heavens. We're here. Yeah, I'm, not, well, I'm, not, I'm was, straight. If y'all don't win a ring, I don't want you to hear. It was Denver. I don't want to hear nah, that. There's no there's excuse. No excuse. I don't want to hear next year. I don't. So you better pray y'all win next year. You better pray this year y'all win. This summer. Locking it. You guys gonna I don't want to hear Tatum is young. I don't. Ooh. You guys gonna you gonna be watching basketball? Your favorite team in May? I don't know. Probably not. I got a chance. Probably not. It's okay. You had a good run. Shout no, out to Katie we, for those couple we rings. We might not watch the Shout out to Katie and D. He's Shout nice. out to Katie. He said um, thanks to KD. You know, they did get that think? one ring when like Tatum was like 22. <laughs> Who can you think? Shout out. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Uh, <laughs> He's taking Bill Russell for a lot. Let me ask you a question. Joel. Your, your brother in Christ, James Harden. Shout out to Draymond He's been Green, the being multiple a great partner. WCF, Steve Kerr, right? one of the best yeah. coaches multiple we've seen. Multiple WCF, multiple, lot, you know. Are you proud of that? Or are you a little upset? Oh, granted, it was in an era where he faced the best team assembled. I mm. think I'm pretty West. proud of it. You proud? Yeah, yeah. I respect that. Yeah. I guess yeah. the Warriors, you know, he's losing to the best team assembled. This man is. That's, he's not using. He's not he, losing to the AC and Heat. This man is struggling oh, against shit. eight seeds and shit, and Jimmy Butler. <laughs> and we talking about we talk like he's look, look at him. Like he, he's about to go. He's he's walking into an East. They won sixty games. We all admit it. The East is not. Nobody's moved by the East. So another year where Tatum gets to coast to the finals. Right, right, right. Should now, be. If, if he we does, it, supposed yeah, to coast last every year. year. Atlanta. We thought it'd be a sweep. Look at that. Six games. Struggling. Panicking. Don't know what to do. Yeah, when we went to the finals, you're acting like we he, didn't go he, through. You we didn't go through. I swear to God, I hate James Harden. Because, <laughs> oh my God, I hate James Harden, bro. I hate Embiid, bro. They shouldn't have even. Why made are you bringing up last year round. when two years ago we went through KD, a series that you thought we were going to lose? Then For we sure. went through Giannis, and then we did beat the Heat in seven. Who is the what? who were the number one seed that year? Miami seven. And then we went to the. That's not an. That's not a close to the finals. That was crazy. You went one for four. 2022. You got it. That's what I'm saying. Like, okay, last year, sure. Last year, Isaiah Thomas times. Shit, after that, 
in the bubble. Listen, the fact we're doing lo- that with IT, shout out. In the bubble, you lost to Bam and Tyler Hero. Yeah, I mean, we were fucking like, also a like rookie. 20 years old. Tyler Hero was a rookie. Okay, did, that, you know, did you have you seen that roster, bro? Go I, back and look I, at that Celtics why roster. I need to look at the roster. Because it was not a good roster. In hindsight, sure. It was, it was not. <laughs> yeah, like, you could look at that team. Sure. There were holes, and that was like a, a, what, a 21-year-old Tatum, I mean, you've had good Tatum. you still have a ring. Okay, realistically, I would say from You're 2022 on, like, yes. that's Three probably... Three years in a row. Three yeah. years in a row. 2022, we went to the finals and lost. Last year, we lost the ECF. Are we going to say 2018? I'm asking a question. Are we going to say 2018? I was, I was what do you mean not a fan? A fan. Yeah, that was Tatum. Rookie year? Were yeah. Die yeah. hard, though. Yes, definitely. Die, 2018? Yeah. I'm asking. Definitely. Are we counting 2018? So I'm I was, yeah, I mean, they, they were on 2 0. They lost to LeBron. LeBron. I'm, I'm letting him pass. They had never lost a series after tra- 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 leading 2 0. You're lying. I'm pretty sure that that's the facts. LeBron shit is gone. LeBron shit is out the window if that's a fact. That was you better hope you win. I got my four bro. I can sit here and yeah. relax. Fucking staring us with a magnet. Imagine that. Us. Our legacies are cemented, right? Ten, you know, t- top ten ever. Congrats. You're never the watching goat. play again soon. I know. It's gonna suck. Tatum's gonna be top ten ever? Probably. Probably what? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably mean probably what? Probably. <laughs> okay. I, I, he needs about four rings to do that. I no five. problem. Okay. And no problem. <laughs> okay, two in the next two years, buddy. Ah. Uh, Listen, if he wins two in the next two years, man. Conversation will be had. All right. Cool. All right. Right now, he's fighting Jimmy. Brother he needs to, to get Jimmy one. Here. He needs to get one. Not worried we about that, We need to see Tatum get one. Blind squirrel finds an acorn every once in a while. I know what I mean? <laughs> Brother found an acorn twice. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking about, Jimmy? Jimmy Butler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's talking about Jimmy Butler. <laughs> Yo, I'll be honest, Joel. For your sake, because you're my brother, the only sake, you bet. I really hope they at least make it to the finals, bro. Right. You should you should bet against us if you don't think we're I'm not. Win, no, win no. The money. For him to not have a for them to not for him to not get slandered, they need two in the next three. Okay, one in the next three is a, they failed. Uh, no, 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 they get one. They one's fine. fine. One out of three is a disappointment. With this roster, disappointment. This LeBron roster won just one. And we call it. And what do we call it? Yeah, he kind of did what he did. No, the late, no, no, the what it, franchise was dog shit before he got what back. It, no, no, no. Because I remember, Joel, I remember this conversation vividly. You were on my side. We were arguing that the LeBron's era with the Lakers was a disappointment. Why? Yes. Because they got one ring. Do not flip at this table. Mm-mm. That's a disappointment, di- but not a failure. Okay. D- disappointment aligns with failure, but whatever. Sure. This is unfair, though. It's it's pretty tough when all you do is shit on the Celtics, and then you're like, well, if you don't win two rings in the next three years, like that happens. How many times does that happen in NBA history? To be fair. With this type of roster? You don't have to go back to back. We didn't actually go back to back. You went year one, year three. I said two and three years. That's like not something that fucking happens. I will be transparent. With this roster you have, it's not insane. Right? You're, you're telling no, me all I the time. I don't think it's insane, but then... And you're at least getting back. I don't think it's insane, but I just... It always just confused me when we have, like, are they even going to make it out of the East? And it's like, they got to win two and three hey, years. we're it's not like, saying... I, we, bro, like, do you have a it? question about like, them making out the East? You just said that. No, he's, I did not. He, he just said that. No, I did not. He just, said, just said that. He it wasn't me. What's it was that? fuck? None of no, us. I did not. You're not flipping No, you said, imagine you don't get out of the East this year. I said, you better hope you don't. That's what I said for your sake. You better hope. That is what you said. I'm only saying that for him. That's what going to get. I think he's just saying he just responded back because this like that thought really shouldn't enter our mind. Right, it shouldn't. It didn't enter my right, mind. It shouldn't. You will be it in the fun. You, you, you just told me that you can't. That's why I said you just told me. Is it are we going to maybe make it out the, the next the, three years? Are we going to win two or three years? There know. are players in NBA history that their whole careers reviewed as playoff failures. They get one. Yeah, they're champions. That's it. I don't think nobody's calling Tatum a playoff failure though. I think we're talking about Boston disappointment for sure. We're talking about Boston. You want to see him get over the hump. But we're talking about Boston as a team. I, I think I, if the Celtics win the championship, they're fine. I think after that, the questions, you really start having yeah, them. Uh, you listen, stop having them. If we're just talking individually, Tatum just needs one. Individually, Tatum just needs one. The Celtics with this core, if you are a Celtics fan with the way that they've played this season, you should be anticipating we could be a potential dynasty. We have the core. We have the, the young players. I understand we're in an era with Nikola Jokic. And they don't have the guy. And there my goes God. that. My God. That's what they do. No, I didn't say God. it. I didn't say it. We'll find out. <laughs> every <laughs> every dynasty is led and, by and one and of them And this is where ones. we get Joel entered into the conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll find out. Well, well I feel Every like dynasty, it, though, is led by one of them guys. But I feel like if you have that type of duo, and like you said, if it started in 2022, right? So 
2022 to the next two, three years, you uh, end up with two rings. Are the Pistons like five, a dynasty? No. No. Ooh, really? They just won one. They won two. They won two. And not back to back, though. They went back to back. Isaiah, they did go back I'm talking back. Isaiah. Isaiah and Joe Dumars. Oh, I thought you were talking about the. No, no, no. They balance. went back to back and they went the third year, they, if I'm not mistaken. They no, they no. lost to the Spurs. They've, no, third. Nope. You're talking about 2000s Pistons? Or are we talking no, about no. All right. We're, no, we're talking bad boys. 80s, 80s. Talking bad boys. They didn't go three. They it's got swept. The they got swept by the, the Pistons. I mean, um, by Tom, the Bulls. Isaiah Thomas was viewed as a top five point guard all time. He was viewed as a top five player probably in the league. He was. But that's why I say with Tatum, though. Like, in terms of the grand scheme of things, There's like, better players than him. Isaiah Thomas. He's not top five. He's, what, what is he all time? He gets a ring. He's top five. No, they went back. They went three. They went three in a row. They they lost in eighty eight and then won back to back. Got it. Got because they lost to the Lakers in eighty eight. Don't even. It doesn't tell me who they lost. They went to the ECF in eighty seven. Yes. Went to the finals in eighty eight. Yes. Lost. They lost to the went Lakers. To the finals eighty nine and ninety one. They won. Then they beat went the Lakers. To the ECF in ninety one. Correct. Got Tatum. It. They Celtics go on win a championship this year. He gets Finals MVP. I don't know how you have how you don't have a Tatum in your top five. That has not happened yet. I, I know that's I know top that's fine. Oh, like well, players? you're saying he's not a top five player, but I'm saying like usually you need to get that run, and you're like, okay, yeah, like you're one of them dudes. I think that's no, I'm fair. saying dynasty. Let me ask you a question. One of them if guys. he wins the championship, we're still not like he's not. Usually, you win a championship, you get deemed best player in the world. Nah, you Jokic, don't do that with, with Tatum. Nah, well, there's certain guys. Jokic has to be close to the. He has to be close like to the Dirk best player. Like Dirk won a chip. Was he best in the world? No, like no one's touching that. You know what I mean? Like if Tatum and Jalen Brown both average 25, and then they win a Finals, you know. All I'm How do you differentiate? I'm starting that? conversations about Jalen Brown if that happens. But dynasties are led by those guys, you know. For sure. Well, all right, that's why I asked. You say no to the bad boy. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe. I would argue, yes. I think you need three. You do. But need I get it. They won back to back. That's why the 2000s Lakers was dynasties. Because if if you only need two, then the 2010s Lakers were a dynasty. We call. And I wouldn't Powell call. Then he had two. I wouldn't call him a dynasty. Ooh. They went back to back though. Yeah, but. And they went to four. But they I went would to say three. yes. They went to three. I would say yes too. Mm. I feel like dynasty. I don't know. Maybe I'm being two loose. Four years. You two it's and just, four is, is four years enough for like a dynasty. Like I look at that Cavaliers team, not a dynasty. Although they went four straight years because they only won Watch one. Mm -hmm. I look at Miami. They won two. They did go back to back. Went to four. I would call that a dynasty. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at San Antonio over the longevity of Tim Duncan's career. They that is entirely a dynasty. Absolutely, yeah. no doubt. That's not a question. I look at the bad boy Pistons because I mean we don't have to talk about the Lakers, we, the the Shaq and Kobe one. We don't have to talk about the Bulls. Uh, I feel like the Bulls are the three, Rockets in that conversation. Three is a no. dynasty because Jordan didn't play. No, they're just not a dynasty. Even though they went back to back. Yeah, I wouldn't call the Rockets. Okay, that was just honest question. Yeah. All right, so then we don't have to talk about Magic Lakers. We don't have to talk about the Celtics, of course, with Larry Bird. I mentioned the Bad Boy Pistons because they did go back to back. You mentioned it. Went to the finals three years in a row. Yes. This was in an era with Magic, with Bird, although later years, of course, and Michael in his uprising to to being the best in the league. I would probably put them in that similar class where this is probably a dynasty because of the era they did it in. I think a dynasty is three three rings in a certain time period. You don't have to win it three times in a row. I think there probably has to be a two-peat in there, but it's three within like a five to six-year span. I think that's what a dynasty is. Mm -hmm. That's, that's why I think the Warriors are a dynasty because they won in 2015, then they won in 2017 and 2018. Mm -hmm. But I feel like they were a dynasty even before that 2022, though. No, that, I'm not including that. I agree, but it's I'm saying before scary. 2022, I still think they're a dynasty. Yeah. You add it to the 2022, they make, oh, wow, this is one of the best dynasties yeah. we've ever seen. But that's why it was so important for KD to come back in 2019, because if they three-peated, that's a legit dynasty. When you three-peat, that's true dominance well, over I the feel league. like, yeah, but in 2019, we're talking about them like one of the best dynasties ever at that point though. Yeah. like legitimate best teams ever. they could have been though yeah. if you know Katie didn't get hurt because in that when he came back against the Raptors he was cooking I also think if Clay doesn't get hurt I think if Clay doesn't get hurt they probably still win There's that still game at least I, I think the Raptors still would have won that's what yeah. Clay was on some other shit happy y'all guys get to see some dynasties man it's good for you hopefully hopefully for your sake hopefully you're not. next yeah so you've seen some Maybe great you, basketball Joel. yeah next you know, I'm here Knicks. Being a no, Steph Curry fan, much being a LeBron Knicks. fan, that's, that's pretty tough. Hey, you get, to, get to see a lot of ups, God, some downs, God put the right thoughts ups. in my head. He said, this guy, follow him. No. I said, yes, sir. What? Happy for y'all. said, God, he gave me the right thoughts. Be a LeBron fan. I said, They yes, part sir. of Donacy is they just room for a player, not even a team. Yeah. You know. that, that's, a, that's a cheap way out. To be fair, he has followed, I mean, the Warriors. Steph has given the luxury of staying with the Golden State Warriors. Uh, LeBron just said, yeah, you're going to go A, B, C, D. What am I supposed to do about that? What would mean more to you, Steph winning rings or the Bulls winning Steph. rings? <laughs> 
<laughs> not even a fucking thought in that my mind. That was a bad question. Steph. He's Why a, is that a bad question? He, you knew the answer. Favorite Steph. player versus your favorite Steph team? Steph getting his fifth? Oh, my God. When is Rick talking about up. the Bulls? At, like, bro, realistically, really? when? When we talk about Atlanta versus the Bulls. I'll That's be honest. His favorite team. You ask me PG or the Bulls? PG. This is insane. Yeah. That no, shot. I don't P- see no, that. P- the Bulls should be his favorite team, though. He's PG repped them for his life. PG or you see Kobe White, DeMar DeRozan, Gone. <laughs> you know, you know how high Riv gets on the Bulls when he starts when they're when they're really good, he starts becoming really delusional about the Bulls. One hundred percent. Like when? When they were good with Lonzo Ball. I was talking about we could what beat do you the Bucks. No, uh, hey, hey, <laughs> I was that defense crazy. was elite. That defense was fucking elite. That was we the best defensive backcourt I've didn't, seen in some time. Brother, we didn't beat a good team all year. All year, yeah. but Lonzo got hurt before that. We still because we had Lonzo got hurt in like December. Yeah. We had a debate on the pod, and he said that I was there. He said that you know know. Zach Levine and Demar would outplay Giannis. That did. That was ridiculous. (laughs) Demar did outplay him one game. We got the (laughs) one one. game, eight points straight on Giannis. All right, five games. Man, listen, man, it is what it is. Now, fellas, beat you on a sweep. Let's get into these NBA awards. Uh, My MVP, thirty-eight years old, went to the WCF. Steph, thirty-six. We'll see. That's why LeBron's a goat. Years ago, I'm glad you know one or two. It really depends mm-hmm. who you ask. NBA awards across this table. I, I feel like you know the MV, MVP conversation has become so toxic to the point that every year, yeah, it becomes that every year because the fans of a certain player that maybe might not win, they get really agitated that their player might not win. Uh, I do have Luca as MVP. Welcome, but Jokic is deserving. Oh yeah, uh, and you know you you cannot try to diminish Jokic's case to just try to prop up Luca because like, they're both exceptional. It's like last year when the Joel Embiid fans were kind of putting their propaganda together as why he should be the MVP, and then you had the Nikola Jokic stance, kind of saying, "Well, you're only, we're doing this out of kind of pity." Uh, but it's so hard to argue the opposite way because if, if you are an MB fan arguing against Nikola Jokic, how much basis do you really have? Similar this year where, um, I say similar where it's Nikola Jokic, but it's completely different because Luka Doncic has been dominant all season long and he hasn't been trying to plead his case, no campaign. The teammates of his are, are wearing shirts, Pravi MVP, that's been pretty cool of them, but... He just plays his game. He's not out here saying, I want the MVP. I'm actively trying to go after it. I feel like that's kind of where Joel Embiid kind of lost it. Or, you know, the the fans' sympathy for him. Because he was vocally talking about how badly he wanted. It's so hard to argue against Nikola Jokic. Advanced numbers love him. I mean, forget about it. Box scores numbers love him. You watch the game, the way that he dominates an offense, the way that he facilitates his offense at the center position. I solely go to Luka Doncic. For, for my MVP is because, well, we're talking about in terms of most games played, he is the league leader in scoring. Are you going to flip? Or is this real? No, this is legit. Oh, okay. No, the one thing I've been consistent on is Luka Doncic <laughs> being my MVP. I know it's like, gotcha. No, <laughs> no, that's been the one thing Dallas Mavericks related. I've been constant on. Okay. This is the MVP of, of the National Basketball Association. Most points. Uh, most assists, if I'm not mistaken. Also, on top of it, one of the league's best rebounders. He is the league's best rebounder at the point guard position. He's... His three-point shooting is immaculate. His field goal percentage is immaculate for the volume of shots that he's taking. And he's climbed from the play-in all the way to the fifth seed. What more would does he have to do to solidify his MVP case? I get it. Nikola Jokic obviously is deserving. This is the one instance where they did co-MVP. Shit, I think all fans would understand and, and, and kind of accept that. But if I had to give one vote to one individual, there's no more valuable player this season to me than Luka Doncic. I understand you take Jokic off. The Nuggets obviously aren't the same team. But you legitimately take Luka off this team. I think we're talking about a lottery team in the Dallas Mavericks. He just means so much to their offense, so much to their team. His usage is insane. Of course, to me, this has to be the MVP. I think it's both. You know, It's just Jokic means so much to Denver that if you take him off, they're going to be one of the worst teams in the league. Mm -hmm. You know, the the rosters that... Well, they're going to be a lottery I don't, team. Uh, Not one of the worst They're going to be a lottery team. Uh, yeah. Jamal is still good I mean, enough. You have Kyrie. Team, worst team. In the well, West, case, I mean. Case, uh, in terms of Detroit. role players, though, Jamal, Casey, They have KD, better role players. Be yeah, but I'm, I think that's easy, too. But you can have role players, and still, if you don't have your guy, you're not going to be that. The one, one, they're both, the, they'd both be bad teams. The one, I, don't, I think the one no difference with Jokic not on the team would be the play of Aaron Gordon. I think Aaron Gordon is so perfect with the Nuggets because of how smart and savvy 
uh, Nikola Jokic is. Now how does he fit? If he's not a great shooter, that's exactly. he kind of gets his looks for around sure. Jokic, around for the sure. rim. For sure. His luxury of being like able to stay in the dunking spot. Throughout. No, yeah, most sure. definitely. I just mean specifically Aaron Gordon if I had to single out one person because he gets to hover in that dunker spot and just wait for Nikola Jokic to make his decision. Am I going to go up for a layup or is, am I going to draw this double team and throw mm. up this lob? I feel like his play would be hindered the most on the offensive side, but defensively, he'll obviously still be able to handle his own. But you lose the best player in the league, naturally you'll be worse. And since I've seen Aaron Gordon when he was without Nikola Jokic, and mm-hmm. he just wasn't, wasn't this. wasn't talking about him. No, no. Was wasn't I mean, he was on the magic. Way. Yeah, you know, fair. and he wasn't viewed as a player that was really that good, mm-hmm. you know, and he's fit so perfectly in Denver. Luka, to me, this MVP race has reminded me a lot of 2019 when Giannis won it over James Harden. Giannis was the first seed in the East. Uh, James Harden was, I think, the fifth or fourth seed in the West. It was a six-game difference between the two. The Bucs won 60. The Rockets won 54. And Harden had a historic scoring season. He was averaging 36, 36, 7. Chris Paul was hurt. Clint Capella was hurt. I feel like James Harden that year, he got robbed. He should have won the MVP. Uh, This year, I think Jokic has a stronger case than Giannis that season. But with Luka, it's just... When we talk about MVP, it's, you know, what player had the most impact on a league that season? And I think that's been Luka Doncic. He's had more special performances than Jokic this year. He had a 70-point game, fourth highest scoring performance in NBA history, first player to average, ever average 33-9-9, nine nine, first in 25-point games, first in 35-point games, first in 40-point games, what he's been having to do every single night with injuries to his team because he's had more injuries than Jokic. I feel like you, he is the MVP. He's been the most valuable to his team because he's been more available and he hasn't always had a healthy roster. You know, the Mavericks, when they're healthy and they're on the court, this is one of the best teams in the West that could be vying for that top three seed in the Western Conference. So I think if people are boggling it down to just Jokic is winning more, I feel like that's a bad way to look at it. I think Luka has just been more impactful this year, and he has been the most valuable player. And Well, before you guys go, another reason why I feel like we could see Jokic secure it outside of the obvious he's playing amazing basketball is last year probably should have been a three-time MVP, three, yes. three-time back-to-back, to back. And you kind of missed the boat on that one, especially the way that he end the, ended the playoffs. Of course, finals MVP, championship ring. And then this year, he obviously kept that same level of play. Maybe a little bit better, honestly, if that's even possible. And so you have your team at top of the, the Western Conference yet again. You're still the most dominant player in basketball. It's going to be hard to see him not take home, but my MVP would be, of course, Luca. Who's yours, Riff? It was tough because I felt like both guys deserved it. You know, when you, Del, ah, not Dels. Drew, you made a good point. Like, when you talk about, like, advanced statistics, talk about value over replacement, you know, offense, blah, blah, EPM, all that nonsense. Jokic. The joker, the joker, the joker, the joker. He's just so good. And he's, he's like kind of Steph Curry in the sense where he's just shattering these advanced numbers. But, of course, like, when you watch the game, you see how valuable both guys are to the team. You see with Luka, you know, his team wouldn't be where he, they're at without him, you know, kind of backpacking his team. And then Kyrie and the boys made a move at the deadline. Now his team's been amazing. For me, I think, like, and I, I, I had a – I looked up a statistic before – where, like, there's not many fifth seeds that's one MVP. You know, they usually hand it to the guys who are top three, sometimes four. If you've done something really historic or something we haven't seen, like the Westbrook triple-double from a guard, they'll give it to a sixth seed or something like that. That year could have been Harden, too. Yeah, like, for me, I just, the joker for me is the MVP. Did you say, wasn't his first MVP a sixth seed, Nicola? Yeah, he had a, tri- mm-hmm. he had a triple-double. Was it the first or the second? That was his first MVP. Yeah, like a triple double as a center. Insane. Um, six seed players wasn't healthy. I think for me the the MVP is Joker. I think him getting the number one seed kind of solidified. He's just he I, and I know Jamal Murray is great. I'm not saying he's not, but the Joker is really just the engine to this team. He's one of the greatest offensive engines we've ever seen in our lifetime. Probably one of the greatest in NBA history, just with the way he can control the game, the flow of the game, how he can get his uh players like open, how he can get into the post and work you out. He can work in the pick and roll, be that guy to dribble or handoffs. Like he he can do everything. He's like five, six different players in one, and it's insane how impactful he is. It's hard to really just say he deserves it over Luca or Luca deserves it over him. I think both guys are deserving. I think both it's like a one A one B. If we can share the award like we used to do with rookie Max. of the year, I would say these both of these guys <laughs> could deserve it. 
But for me, I think most valuable team, most valuable player to a team is best player on one of the best teams in the league. That is that is uh, the argument that they've been consistent with. So I got the Joker as the MVP. First year, third seed, second MVP, six seed. Wow. <coughs> okay. So second, second year, so six. Second. Got it. Um, I think good points. You know, Luca. If you want to have Luca, Sabonis as MVP, is also number six in the MVP award track. Shout out to Sabonis. Uh, he'll be on one of my All NBA teams. Respect uh, him. It's nuts, but I ain't gonna say nothing. Six is, is a little crazy. Struggling for a playing spot. I would have right now. Have Jokic as the MVP. West is good. I think. Um, I think either are fine. Like you said, it's if this is a year where it's co MVP. Although I feel like that's kind of whack. Just give it to one of these two dudes. But it's become a two man race. You know, SGA for a while I think was probably at the lead at one point. Then with the injury and kind of his. Uh, diminishing play because of the injury more than anything over a couple weeks stretch. I think he fell out. Then Giannis with the Bucks, their struggle since Doc Rivers has been hired. He was never really in the conversation outside of that, you know, Tatum. I know Brunson's been getting some love lately, but realistically it's the two man race between Jokic and, and Luka Doncic right now. There's really no way to like argue one over the other. Any point you make for Jokic, you can make for Luka. Any, any argument you can make for Luka, you can make for Jokic. I think the Nuggets securing the best seed in the West, or most likely they got the big win over Minnesota last night. That's for the deciding factor. Um, could be a cop-out answer because, sure, the Mavs dealt with some injuries. Jamal Murray has been hurt for this last week or two as well. Um, but I just think having the best record in the NBA is probably the tiebreaker between the two if it was the other way around and Luka was the number one seed and and Denver was the five seed I'd probably be going with Luka Doncic but when you have these two players who are pretty clearly to me I shouldn't say clearly I think Giannis is in that top three as well and Embiid healthy but this season have been clearly the two best players in the NBA what they do for their teams like we mentioned you go from these players and your legit team that could go to the finals to becoming a lottery team that no one really respects um, in the NBA when it comes playoff time so what they mean to their team can't be understated I would have Jokic right now um, but I can't be mad at Luka Rookie of the Year feel like this is Wemby, Wemby, Wemby. across the board Victor Wembin unanimous a six man of the year uh, sorry apologies last question uh, Victor Wembin best rookie season ever yes or no That I've seen? Yeah. I'm fine with yes. Probably. I think Blake's was pretty dope. I also put into account expectation. Because you're given the generational tag. You're said you're deemed the yeah. second best prospect in the history of basketball. I can say yeah. I would go I as don't far remember, as say yes. I don't remember a lot of rookies off the top of my head. The only ones, it's it, the crazy, crazy ones are the ones that first year came out of college. You did multiple years in college, like the Kareem. You have Tim now, Duncan Mellos also. Mellows was pretty crazy. Mellows was really good, too. They LeBron, made the playoffs, yes, too. they did. That's very true. LeBron's I think what's crazy. most impressive with Wemby is he never plateaued. Like, yeah. a lot of times he you, hear, you hear people saying you hit a rookie wall. Wemby got better basically month oh after God. month. His three-point shooting, especially, um, of course, his defense. Like He's going to be I on an all-defense team, I think we're going to all have a six-man of the year uh, sweep. Malik Monk? I have Malik Monk. Is Nas Reed in contention? Yes. Okay. I, 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 I like I like both answers. Yeah. I had Malik slash Nas. I don't care. But Nas has been both. starting lately, though. That, I feel like he I told made you a good point. Yep. I feel like this is very much IQ of last year when mm. IQ was starting for the Knicks. He was putting up some crazy performances. He was still obviously amazing off the bench yeah. too, but he was really having some great performances down the stretch in the starting lineup. Nas Reed would be second for me though. I think to your question, I think I'd probably go Blake Griffin. Now his is a little Mickey because it wasn't really rookie, similar to like a Chet. You know? Oh, for sure. I, I understand that, mm -hmm. but like what he did his rookie season, no, it was spectacular. Do you guys know the answer as the only player to win rookie of the year unanimously? Dame. It is Dame. His rookie year was spectacular too. He won it over A D. Yeah, his rookie year is pretty special. Those are both good names. Malik Monk and uh Nas. Nas, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Malik's sure. been O D off the bench. All right. Uh, Sixth man of the year, yeah, I had Nas Reed. I'm fine with I have Malik or Nas. I'm cool with either or. Yeah, I think Malik definitely, you know, this back-to-back -back years where he deserves it, but I just feel like in each year, there's just been a guy that has a little bit of a better resume. Mm -hmm. Last year was Brogdon, and this year, you know, Nas Reed, what he's meant to the Timberwolves, they're one of the top seeds. You have to take that into account. You know, he's one of the top seeds, and he's playing his part. For six man, though. For six man, I think it does. I think it's just who's the best bucket off the bench. And Nas has had a start this year, and he's played really well when he started, too. I don't think that matters, though. It doesn't, sadly. Well, why six, doesn't it matter? Because six, six man is six next man, is, man up. No, six, yeah, six, six man is first man, man, off, like the first man off the bench. First man off the bench. Which is why, listen, I'm fine with Nas, especially because if we were able to use his time while Cat's been gone, he has really been the second option of this team while Cat, uh, Carl Anthony Towns 
has been out. And it kind of coincides with Malik Monk being out that with too. injury. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But even more so, even more was put onto his shoulders, and he was still able to answer the call. I feel like that's why we have him in this conversation. But like your, like to your to your point, Riv, that's not what this ward is. The ward is, hey, when, when we have our five-man rotation and we make our first sub off the bench, who's that guy that's going to come out there and be the most impactful? Uh, honorable mention, Bogdan Bogdanovich. He's been amazing this season. Bobby Porter's honorable mention. Okay. Norman Powell, cool. honorable mention. That's a great one. Rui Hachimura. You was? Yeah, yeah, I was. Rui Hachimura has been one of the most efficient players this season. He just has so much inconsistencies of starting and not starting. Shout out Darvin Ham. <laughs> Defensive player of the year. I have Gobert. I have, I have Gobert. Gobert. I have Victor Wembanyama. I yeah. really, I understand. Worst team in the in the Western Conference. Does it, winning not matter? <laughs> like, Gobert is Gobert is Gobert. I mean, the best defense. Wemby is gonna win. Backpacking, I don't know. Wemby, Wemby might win, win, win double digits of these. They honestly. got some elite no. defenders. Who's out there. backpacking? Victor. He's backpacking. Uh, will I say Rudy is in a way backpacking? Sure, I of course. They ain't backpacking a, shit though. They they trash. <laughs> but no, well, his defensive impact when he's on and off the court is like twelve point difference. But the wins though, it doesn't show. That's because it, because the that's team's also not good. The, the players are around him. Man, more. you take you take Anthony Edwards off the team. They're winning as many games as they are. They're still a elite no. defense. I guarantee you, they're still number one. This was this was before last night's game, but. Uh, the Timberwolves had a 107.9 defensive rating. Second place was Boston at 110.5. That's the same difference between second and 10th place. Again, and, and they've been a if, dominant defense by far and away, not close to best defense. If you guys have seen our whistle sports video, listen, no no slight to Rudy Gobert. He will win this award. Gobert's PR who's, is terrible. Who's man. my DPOI? I'm going to go with Victor Wembanyama. You look I'm at the list it. of defensive player of the years with steals and blocks. Of course, you guys know what it is, stocks. He's... Victor Wembanyama is at 4.8. That is more than every single defensive player of the year winner since 2009. He is the defensive player of the year. This is the last year we are going to see a player not named Victor Wembanyama win DPOI for a good amount of time. And Rudy is deserving in his own right. I'm not saying he's not. He has been amazing. But when there's a hundred a hundred difference of stocks between Victor and Rudy. I'm sorry. I have to go with the guy that is constantly making an impact on that side of the ball. I'm not saying Rudy isn't. I just mean we see more in volume with Victor, and it does show in the stat sheet. And, of course, it also shows with your just eyes. Just to put it in perspective, when Rudy's on the court, when Rudy and Ant are on the court, they have a 109 defensive rating. When Rudy's on, Ant's off. They have a 107 defensive rating. So Rudy, like Rudy, it does not matter who's on the court. Rudy, he That's can why carry a defense. With the stocks point, I just you know, I think those are good numbers, but you know, Rudy's anchoring the top defense, and they're winning a lot of games. So, uh, defensive rating on and off. So you mentioned Victor's. Oh, excuse me, you mentioned Rudy's yep. with yep. just Ant. So when he's off, it is a twelve point difference. Yeah, I, I, I believe it. That is insane. They're fucking twelve. Garbage. How many times? <laughs> yeah, they are garbage. Uh, They're actually horrible. Such a good way to say yeah, it. I, I get it. Rudy's is four, which is still great. It's a four point difference. Especially that is still that, super impactful. That four point difference is you're going from like elite to super elite with the Spurs. It's like you're going from dog shit to like probably super a top dog 12. Shit. No, probably, I think they're like a top 14 what or 15. But here, here's why. Like yeah. if the Heat were winning a little bit more too, shit. But here we go. When, 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 when Wemby's off the court offensively, they drop a point. They drop a point. Yeah, they go from one. But the plus to one, minus shows and everything because AD, so AD shit isn't good. Okay, that makes sense. The th- the thing with these numbers that I feel like sometimes you got to take it with a grain of salt Show. is because like the defense rating from on and off is great, right? But what is that difference really if their defense is horrible with them and still kind of bad with him still? Because uh, for the season they have a twenty, there's twenty second in defense rating. Twelve point difference. Rating. That's 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 drastic. But this year they have they have the. 22nd best defensive rated this year. They're, they're team. If Victor wasn't there, it's clearly they'd be the worst. Yeah, but Rudy Gobert has taken a team that last year was not a top five defense. But he was there. And they're, yeah, but him playing at high level. Yeah, I got you. And they're the number one defense in the league. And we've seen Rudy Anchor number one defenses with no perimeter defense talent. Of course. You know, well, I think this year, it, it just mat- it matters to me the team ranking. That's what matters to me. Hmm. Because it's like, let's say, let's just use an offensive engine for an example. Let's just use Luca, right? Yeah. If Luca, if, oh, look, his offensive rating is nuclear when he's on the court. The Mavericks are one of the top offenses, but their offense for the year as a team is like 18th. Then how much does that, how much do you really weigh that can, in? Can I ask a question? Uh, is, is, does Bam out of bio into your matrix for DPOY? 
Yes. The Heat, are, the Heat are top five. Yes. He has a better differential in terms of on and off when it comes to defensive rating than Rudy Gobert. He's the third best candidate. Or his second. Right. Averages more steals, averages less blocks. I will have him third. Yeah. I, I he, think he will Gobert be at the uh, award better. show. But would you say that, <laughs> so off that basis though, does Bam have a better case than Victor? You can make that argument, yes. See, that's, you can make an argument for Bam over Victor. His responsibility is just way more than, honestly, both guys to a degree. More than Victor, too, because he plays yeah, I, the perimeter? I think because what he has to do in the pick and roll, yeah. what he has to do at the rim, plus in terms of switching, he has to be the communicator. The angle. Like he has to do, just like, he has probably top five responsibilities in the league just of what he does on offense and defense mm-hmm. for the Heat. Like, they do, they give him that much responsibility. Like I think winning just, it matters a lot in this award, quite frankly. All right. It does. You know, that's why Robert Williams won. Because they were number one defense. Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart. And, oh, yeah. Facts. Christ. One of the two, whatever. It, really, it should have been Robert Williams. Sorry. Smart was lead. Uh, well, you said that Robert Williams wasn't even all, all defense that year. Don't think I forgot. When, when we did our all defensive teams. Rob Will was all defense that year. But I'm saying you didn't have him on your team. It's cause well, you got to give me that footage. I don't know. Cause I, <laughs> he did get hurt that year, too. Yeah, he, he, he well, if Rob Will was hurt by games. the time I made my list, then I mean, that's probably a perfectly fine explanation yeah. as to why. I'm just saying. Should have been on it. You just said he should have went to your NBA teams. It should be fun. Yeah, between Marcus Smart and Rob Will. Yeah, Rob Will had more responsibility than Marcus Smart. I mean, that's what happened. You thought he should have been DPOY. But yeah, you know, that's why Marcus Smart won. Sure so. he wasn't pushing Mikael Bridges vibes? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Good. Not for DPOY, bro. Mikael Bridges, man. Remember when you were pushing sick. him, man? Yeah. He makes yeah. you sick, doesn't he? No. Oh. I'm fine. You probably were pushing him for DPOY, honestly. No, he's talking about, about a totally different thing. No, about he's pushing him for all-star now. They need to free, oh, they need to free oh, that oh. whole team from that city. I don't know. They're going to build around him still. This is a bad vibes Nets team, man. Get him still, they still believe in Bet. Get him on some good vibes. Hey, I still yeah. believe in him. You might be the only person alive. Who does. Nets fan. Nets listen, uh, ownership. Listen, they believe in you know why I still believe in him? Same reason I believe in Usman Garuba. Because that was all I knew when I was back in the day, man. I had nothing else to believe in. Yeah. Well, I come on. All that because that was when I first started to really, really watch basketball. Let go. I think no, I, I think it's fine. It's okay. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't shame I can't you. Do that. You well, can't, listen, you I'm, can't say that. I'm not vocal about it, right? Because he was the one who was actively on my neck about it. Oh no, because he still rides for Cam Reddish. Oh, true. He Have does. you heard me speak about Cam Reddish? It's been a while. And even it? entering the season, it was still kind of crazy to ride yeah, for him. Yeah, but like, when the last time you heard me speak? It's been. A, he hasn't probably done shit. since like October. No, he's actually none, been dog shit for like last eight games. I haven't about. said a word. He's, he hasn't it's been good. To speak he's never been good. Yeah, no, dude, I'm sorry. That felt rude. This season, he just was not what Respect the Lakers the first, were expecting. First couple months of the he season. He locked up your uh, Steve Nash goat in the uh, in-season tournament. Don't forget that. Strapped him. He did. He's a bench player. And he scra- that's bad. Bench ben- players. Your goat. Well, let me say your second goat. Uh, said that he was the hardest person he ever had to guard. Who, who, who? Anthony Edwards. Oh, uh, in did. high school. High school. He was, yeah, I mean, high school. <laughs> in high school. It like was Cam Reddish is a high school legend. That, that that video fed families for Cam Reddish. It was oh, yeah. bro. He was a dog. He had fifty. And they thought he could make an NBA he had 50 twice in the same weekend. How many people could do that? That's kind of crazy. That special. is kinda, that's that's hard and shit. Special special. Hoops. Most improved player. <laughs> I have Kobe White. I have if this award actually meant what it meant, Kobe White. Hey, easy. Last year they gave it to Lori and. People who Finally. really thought it was going to go to SGA. Before that, didn't Ja get it? I thought he it was did. Julius. Oh, you're right. It was Ja. Ja, yeah. Ja going But then didn't three, Julius right? win three years no, before year that? Three. Year, facts, you're three, you're three. Julius did win one. It was Julius and Ja. I'm cool with but Brandon then Lori. and Lori. I'm fine with Lori. So two of the last three have been right. Two of the last four. They so were trying to get the SGA last that's year. That's what I said. Let me ask this question. I know that Tyrese Maxey has He's the played overwhelming. He has played himself into stardom. But... I understand Kobe White. He made a bigger leap because he went from, are you going to even, are you good enough to be on an NBA roster to, oh, wow, you know, there, strong, there's really yeah. something here. There's really something that here. That was, strong. well, Whatever. he just was, he dropped off last year turns points wise. Yeah, but he got a little better. Last year, he was a role player. And yes, this yes, year, yes, he's go, actually like, maybe, and he missed time. there's a oh, semblance. He's, he's an also all-star kind of, caliber player. He hasn't been the same post all-star regularly. But, but it's also, let, let me ask you something. What's more impressive? A player going from a role player to an upper echelon starter or going from an upper echelon starter to a star? 20 to 26 is significant. Maxi was an upper echelon starter last year. I feel like he was teetering on all-star yeah. level. I don't know. His performance against Boston playoffs, that was that kind I of... Feel like, I feel like last year last year, Tyrese Maxi versus this year, Kobe White numbers are But let me ask you similar. a question, Rivers. But I feel like the idea of them weren't similar. Like well, Max, yeah, because Kobe White shot his value like Maxi last year... We already like. Here's the thing with in my like last year we kind of knew 
Maxi was kind of going to take this leap. Like, it was destined in the stars once Harden left. But we mm-hmm. came into the season with our preseason most most improved player. For sure. And we round table said Tyrese Maxey. It was Tyrese Maxey. I understand that. But I also feel like sometimes when we, we lose sight of what the expectation was initially. Because with Tyrese Maxey initially, he was drafted in the 20s. Uh, Kobe White was a top 10 pick. But you can adjust. You can adjust, and but Maxi was ass. What I but Tyrese Tyrese Maxi is not taking a leap from just to like a good player. He's taking you have Max a or Kobe leap. White. I have Kobe White, okay. but that was an argument that somebody made for Maxi, and I can understand it. I can too. I, I can too. because too Tyrese Maxi. I do feel like going from a, going to going from a starter to a legit star is more of an impressive jump. I don't know. I feel it like, rarely happens. I feel like because is Kobe White going to go from this to? An all-star nod? Kobe White went from a role player to a legit number one option on the team. Legit number legit one number option. one is crazy. On the team. I'm just talking about on the <laughs> on Bulls. The Bulls. <laughs> yeah. On the Bulls. Maxi yeah. went from, My goodness. I'm getting fed See, if by... if I said that shit, you would be looking at me cross-eyed. No, it's a fact, though. Maxi went from, I'm getting fed by Harden and Embiid, to now I'm just getting fed by Embiid. I mean, Maxi's been the number one for the Sixers without Embiid. For sure. And he has and not been good. So let me ask you this question. He's probably put up better numbers than Kobe White has. Because of... Because of opportunity. Opportunity, not because of action. Do, do we all too. have... Kobe White? Really? Yeah, Kobe White? I had Maxi one. I had okay. Kobe White. I wouldn't be mad either so way. So let, let me ask you this. I, I just think Maxi, I mean, he's like minus 1,500 to win it. Uh, it let's, just, let's just put ourselves three years into the future. Let's say Kobe White wins this award. And Kobe White, from this point forward, remains the same player. He does not make an all-star game. He's just what he is, just a nice starter now. And Tyrese Maxey continues to ascend into a star. He's a multiple-time All-Star. Will you regret giving the award to Kobe White? Because this is Tyrese, Tyrese Maxey shooting 41-23 with a. With, oh my God! Because this yeah. is Tyrese Maxey's oh first was year this? going taking a leap into star. Because he's, he's forty-five, thirty-seven on the season. Yeah, he was forty-one, twenty-three when Embiid didn't play. In all those games? Yeah, on, on, oh. that's the that's the whole official on twenty-four, three and five. But when Embiid does play. <laughs> 27 and 7 on 46 41. That's a dog right there. Yeah, brother. Uh, what's your question, Joel? I apologize. I'm not repeating it at all. Right all he <laughs> said was, would you take would you take Kobe White who Kobe would White's win? 44 38. You lied to me. Yeah, it's not that bad. No, no, no I said post all-star break. He struggled. Oh, fuck. Let's say like if Maxi goes, makes multiple all-star games, is now this legitimate star in this mm-hmm. league, and Kobe White is kind of the same player for the rest of his career, yeah. do you regret giving this award to Kobe White? Mm-hmm. It's hard to I, play that game in hindsight. I don't know, because it wouldn't be... Like, I'm giving him an award for a specific season. Mm-hmm. So I a agree. specific yeah. jump. So I don't think I'd Like, do we there. regret giving the award to Lori last season, even though no. SGA is far better? No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't. I think he's a legit all-star, though. Oh, yeah, Kobe White and Lori, but at the same time, but, SGA but, and Lori are not even I feel even like that's the same, the same comparison, though. Like, SGA went from star to MVP level. Lori went from role Maxie's player not, to star. Yeah, but that's bad. what I'm saying. Like, Maxi didn't go from the superstar. He just went from, I guess, he, starter all-star. Legitimate to all-star. But level looking, all-star. looking back at it, you could say maybe SGA could have got the award because that was a more significant leap. I don't know. I think Lori got. The, I, Lori deserved that award. Oh, thank you, Lori. SGA went I mean, from going like from twenty four to thirty one a game. Lori going from an shocked the world. I know, but like going from an all star to a legit MVP, that's such a that's a leap that people don't take. I know. Last year was two different leaps though, because SGA goes from star to MVP, and then Lori goes from role player, kind of a weird fit on the Cavs to all star. Like a friend, let me not say throwing, but you know, more, you understand yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a, that that deal was not to get Lori marketing. Mm, you know what no. I mean? Um, it was and the Lori five picks. A, well, Lori had an eleven point jump. Yeah, it's OD. Yeah, yeah. Maxi 26, 4, and 6 without Joel B this year. Yep, you rounded. That's fine. Um, 26.3. 5.6 assists, yeah. Oh, I'm looking at it, and it says 25.5. You rounded. Oh, I was fine. on Stat Muse. Are you on Stat Muse? I am. Oh. It says Tyrus Maxi's average 26, 5, oh, and 4. Oh, what the fuck? Hey, that's yeah, why you got to click links. Okay. Because uh, right here, without opening it up, it just says that he's average 25. Yeah, be, I am crying. You didn't, he's shooting. <laughs> did you, I didn't click the link. I just read the free right. It said the same shit. All he's right. shooting 43% from the field without Embiid. That's dog shit. And 34% from three. Yeah, it's really not. It's not, not good. <laughs> it's not good. It makes sense. I mean, it's it's okay. It's like not terrible, though. It's not Jordan Poole split, splits. Jordan Poole is not good. I know. Those aren't those splits are not good. I thought they were. I mean, forty three, thirty four splits is not. That's it's like a not terribly bad. That's bad. 
That's not good for I a don't, star. I don't know if it's terribly bad. For I don't stars? Think it's terribly bad. Bro, there's a reason why Philadelphia was a well under 500 team without Embiid. It is Embiid, but it's not like Max, who was playing at this level like he was playing with Embiid. Yeah, no, no for sure. Joel Embiid makes him better, but I, mean, we, I, I would love to mm-hmm. see Kobe White be the number one center of attention for opposing defenses for 30 games. I, mean, I think he, he kind of is. With DeMar there, it's definitely shared. It's Oh, well, I mean, let's see yeah, the usage. That's true. That's it's, true. it's not shared with Tobias. <laughs> No, <laughs> I don't know. Some do down the stretch, some fourth quarters. I've seen what Tobias do you think the difference in usages shit. between those two. Let's find out. Kobe White this season, his usage not that high, forty-two percent uh, percentile at twenty-three point eight. Let's see Demar Derozan. It's going to be so much more. Yeah, he's more of an ISO player. He's definitely going to have a higher usage. Oh Lord, have mercy. Twenty-seven point two, which honestly, it's ninety-six percentile, but four percent more. No, this is at twenty-eight percent usage rate. Four percent difference puts you in the ninety-eighth yeah. to forty-two. Hit me out. That's four percent jump, nineteen points, twenty five points, a couple free throws. I do feel like layups, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Six playmaking is kind of crazy. Yeah. His playmaking leap doesn't get talked about either. Like the limited, the limited uh, turnovers that he has. He's for doubled his assist. his assist numbers from last season. Yeah, you know, doubled. I think he's just good at really keeping control of the ball. I don't think he's made like a in, like a leap in terms of just being a better uh, passer. Yeah, but he's definitely he knows how to just keep control of the ball. Yeah, for me, I, I I have Kobe White, but I'm definitely talking myself into Tyrese Maxey. I'm not mad at either. I'm yeah. not mad at either. I'm re- I really if don't If I care. had to do a legitimate one, I'd obviously have different answers. These are mine, and I'm just going to go with Kobe White jumping 10 points. Coach of the year, I Mark, had Mark Dagnall. Mark Dagnall. I had Jamal Mer- Mosley if they land the third seed. That's also a great answer. It's either Mark. Yeah, I had sorry, Mark, Joel. I had or Mark. Stop. No, Missoula. Joe Missoula. Mo- Coach of the he, year. He could be third. Round of applause. I can see him at third. I, I think he is third. Uh, Joe Mazzulla is number one on my uh, my coach of the year ladder. Wait, I would have I would have uh, Mark two. I would have Jamal Mosley three. Like if Jamal gets third seed, I will. He's one to me, but Mark is up here too. And Zola. do you guys think the Celtics overachieved this year regular season? I think yes. slightly. Sixty wins is crazy. Yes, okay. you, to have a, a almost fifteen game lead from second place. But, yes, you overachieved. But are we shocked that you guys got? Shit, 60 honestly, wins? nah. Yeah, y'all should have won sixty games with the roster that y'all had. Yeah, we're healthy all don't year. Do this. No, I don't think we're shocked. Y'all won sixty games. I'll be honest. No, did anyone think we were gonna have a? If you want seventy, the, 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 that's the, the gap in the East. Fourteen game is crazy. lead and top five now because rating. of the Bucks. You know and let me, let that's me, the problem. Oh, that's it. That's why we really are looking at the Celtics the way that we are. That at least me. The Bucks, if we thought yes. what they should have been, it should have been a lot be a closer. Game yes. Gap. Yes. But why does that take away from Boston? No, you guys played amazing this year. It's because like Boston lived up to it, in my opinion. Probably exceeded top five net rating is crazy. I agree. That, that's insane. You also like, have a stack. Why do you ignore that you have a stack team? We have a stack. I, I was asking, did we overachieve? Because if I came into India and saying, I think I think we're gonna have a top five net rating of all time, I don't. I think you guys probably look at me a little crazy. But if I, you told yeah. me you guys were gonna win sixty games, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. If I would have said we I had, wouldn't a, have we had a thir- too crazy, if, you said if, if we have a 13, 14 game lead in the East, you wouldn't have said. I, someone I would have said. I would have just been. What's happening with the other teams in the East? <laughs> that they not, they not, they not doing their uh-huh. part. I was just asking because I thought even still the team was stacked. Because I still bro, thought it was a bit of. I was, I was surprised we were. I fifteen listen, game difference is insane. Coming is, into the season, I thought us and the Bucks and Sixers obviously got hurt. I thought it was going to be neck and neck. I thought the Bucks were going to be really good. So that's why I said I think they still overachieved a bit. But if it's huge, but if Embiid was healthy all year, the Sixers w- wouldn't have had your. It record. wouldn't have been a thirteen game. I yes. think they'd been a sixty win team though. So since two thousand ten, there has only been one, two, three, four, five coaches that have won sixty games and one uh, coach the year. So Monty won it in twenty twenty two. He had sixty four wins. Five in fourteen years. Yeah. Five, yes. Monty won bad. it in 2022. He yep. had 64 wins. It's like 33%. Mike Budenholzer won it with 60. And then you had Mike again with the Hawks. 60. Valid. How many 60 yeah. win teams were there? Like, through that span? He said five. Five. And, and all coaches won coach of the That's year? That's what I thought. No. Oh, ones that, All of the coaches that won 60 games won coach of the year. So there's only been five teams to win 60 games since 2010. And they all yes. okay. Because all these other ones is like 59, 55, 57, 48. Did Steve Kerr win coach of the year when he when you guys yes, won 73? he won in 2016. 73 not. He was getting that. that yeah, was, that's what I figured. But it was yeah. Greg Popovich won in San Antonio 14. Thibodeau won it when he won 62 and 11. So, Joe might get it. Probably. Tibbs. I got Mark Dagnall. Um, How many wins I got, Dallas? 62. Okay. They're probably going to end you're, with like a 64, 65. You're rocking with the Phoenix Suns yeah. of Devin Booker. The fact that they won 64 <laughs> is fake uh, crazy to me. Yeah, our our next two games, you guys smoked us, by the way. Next smoked us. It um, was, and then they lost in the second round. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think our last two games are. I mean, I don't know if no one's going to play. Fucking game. They were nice. Their defense bro. was they fucking elite. Nice, damn. We played Charlotte and Washington. Was a fourth quarter guy. Their defense was elite. And Mikel, yeah, it's Chris Paul was elite. And also at the same time, Mikel was DPOY Wayne candidate. Casey almost won 60 games. And that team was awesome. Aiton wasn't bad. He actually was very good in the regular but 64, season. 64. Like, if somebody told us at 64 that team, we'd be like, that's a little high. Uh, Jay Crowder was on that team. Sorry, what season? That year, 2022. 2022. I believe so. Because right, I'm, I'm getting team. mixed. Yeah, Cam Johnson, obviously, but I'm getting mixed yeah, with the Bucks. Yeah, Payne was yeah, on that team. Javel McGee was right. Last year, oh. I think, got traded, right? Was that the, Javel was in Phoenix? Go, mm-hmm. Shit. Let's see, 22. That was the year they got him. 64 wins, man. 7-6 playoff record. Uh, Damian Lee, Josh Kogi. That's when they stole Damian Lee from us. Damian Lee was him for you guys? Yeah, he was cool. Isn't he married to... Yes, Sidel. Who's that? The sister. Sister of, of Curry's, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Looks exactly like them. It's insane. I don't know how he does it. We can move on to all NBA teams. You guys want to start off with the first, second, or third Tor team? Craig. Or doesn't matter. First team. First team. So my first team is Luka, Jokic, SGA, Giannis, and Brunson. That's my top five. Oh! Had a feeling he was going to do that. I tried to talk myself into Brunson the first team. I had team. SGA, Giannis, Luka, Joker, KD. Wow. I okay. Did. KD, I first team. Jokic, SGA, Luka, Giannis, Tatum. That is also what I have. The Boston Celtics are going to have one. That's who I yes. fucking missed. Yeah, the Boston Celtics are going to have a player in the first team. The so you didn't have Tatum at all? I don't have Tatum on all my teams, but not because he didn't deserve <laughs> it. I fucking <laughs> forgot. So my second team, I have KD, AD, Tatum, LeBron, and Kawhi. That's my second team. I have Brunson, AD, LeBron. I do have Donovan Mitchell here. And he, KD. Doesn't he doesn't qualify. Yeah. I appreciate that. I have. So then, yes, I would put Kawhi here instead. I have Brunson, Ant Man, KD, LeBron, and AD. Or excuse me, KD, LeBron, AD. I have Brunson, KD. Now I, I fixed it. So, yeah, I fixed it. I have to fix so, my So own Tatum thing. goes first? Tatum goes the first. So my first team is SGA, Giannis, Luka, Joker, Tatum. Tatum does deserve the first team. Second team is Brunson, KD, LeBron, Curry, Kawhi. My third team is Ant-Man, Steph, Booker, Sabonis, and Halliburton. You're happy. Okay. I had Steph, Booker, Kawhi, Sabonis, and there's six players because I can't decide between Zion and Jalen Brown. Yeah, mine's going to be uh, Sabonis, Zion, Rudy, Ant, and Steph. Mine's is Zion, Sabonis, Ant Man, AD, PG. PG gets on there. Okay, I like that. Say your, sorry, say it again. Your five. Zion, Sabonis, Ant, AD, PG. No, Steph. Steph is on my second team. Really? Yes. Even though he's been. So you don't have Booker? Uh. I don't have Booker. No. Mm, It's averaging 27 this year. I know. What about JB? Jalen Brown? Yes. Who would he go over? Paul George. It's tough. PG? I think PG's been slightly better. That defense for JB has been all world. PG's Mm -hmm. defense has kind of been great this year. It has been great, but then also offensively, you see JB. I've seen PG too. Super efficient. I'm not arguing that he shouldn't get a 60, spot. 62 wins. Paul George would be honorable mention for sure. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not mad at I either. only say also he is a part of the most winning team in NBA. I mean, if you want to throw him in, you could throw him in. Did you, did you have him in? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> what <laughs> are we doing? <laughs> How LeBron's 30 games was just so special. Yeah, yeah Halle, 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 I games. couldn't. I really and even couldn't. Then, and even then, it's like the We're scoring gonna, has dipped with the playmaking. He, he's leading the league in assists. Still. Brother, he's not getting in. He, I mean, it's, it, for, it's okay. For the whole, like for the whole body of work season, like, if you're aver- you're averaging twenty one and eleven, the efficiency I mean, cool. the efficiency's been so ugly lately that it's it's yeah. Hard but for, for the season, it's it. still solid efficiency. I know, but really good efficiency. That, it's not the full like for a majority. I shouldn't say majority, but I feel like sixty percent of the season he hasn't been what he was. Well, yeah, but I'm, for that forty percent, he was like first team All NBA yeah. lock. I'm with you. I'll also be honest. Donovan Mitchell is kind of the case in point of why the sixty five game win, sixty five game total is kind of. Bullshit, honestly, honestly, I'm not mad because I feel like when we got this rule last year, we'd be like, we're going to put Mikael Bridges in this shit. And we look at the 15. Donovan's at 50. Yo, these players like, play. These are close. really good. Kawhi, they Kawhi all made sure like, to play until he was eligible. deserves it. Zion sure. deserves it. JB, like, there's no guys like, I'm only putting them because he plays 65. Nah, I just mean in a sense, Donovan Mitchell, Mitchell when yeah, he, he was healthy, and B deserves he should be on conversations. Um, you know? Yeah. So, but I like this just because it makes it even, like, you just know who can and who can't. And I also like that it's positionless because I kind of just went in these as order yes. of how I felt. I like positionless. For my all defensive teams, my first team I had Wemby, Bam, Gobert, Herb Jones, Anthony Davis. I had the same five. Okay. You know what? Maybe I'm fake. I just feel like there's got to be a guard. 
there's just going to be a guard. I know it's positionless, but I just feel like they're just going to throw a guard in there. So I have Victor. I have Rudy. I have Herb. I have Bam. My last spot, although I do would love to have AD there, I put Caruso. I feel like Caruso has just been unbelievable on the perimeter, has been one of the best perimeter defenders in the league this season. You could argue the best perimeter defender in the league this season, right next to Herb Jones. Uh, so I feel like he has a case for a first team. I would love to see AD be first, though, but I don't have him in my first team. I have Caruso, Herb, Wemby, Gobert, AD. Over Bam? I have Bam on my second team. Okay. My second team, I have Caruso, Derek White, Jalen Suggs. And then the last two spots, that's where I got tricky, where I could have added anybody uh, Drew Holiday comes to mind. Mm-hmm. He was now, on mine. He's just he's just huge to what the Celtics do. But then I was thinking about it, and I'm like, well, Chet Holmgren, what he's done with the Thunder. You I know, have a wild name on it. What him. he means for them. And then I had Isaiah Hartenstein. Never That's mind. So I have. I have same there. All right. I have Hartenstein on mine. Hartenstein, you know, he, he's just been so elite this year. He has been. So, yeah, to me, I, I feel like he should be an all-decent player. If, if it's between Hartenstein and Chet, if I got to remove one, I'll probably remove Chet, and then I'll put – Drew Holiday in there, but I, I do feel like I do want to get another guard in there. Did SGA enter anyone's matrix? There's a few guys before I got to SGA. Even though he's still one of the league leaders in steals. Yeah, there was a few guys I got before. I had Hardenstein. I had Hardenstein, Drew, Jalen, Bam, Derek White. Jalen. Sucks. Got it. Yeah, my uh, so mine's AD. I have both the guards from Boston. I do have Drew. I do have Derek White. I went with Jalen Suggs, and my five is Isaiah Hardenstein. I'm mad. I like. I had the top four: D. White, Drew, Jalen Suggs, Caruso. My fifth, I went Jaden McDaniels, but I could be talked into Hardenstein for sure. You know, it's it sucks being a defender in the NBA because it's not really being paid attention to. Only two yeah. teams for all defense is kind of crazy. Third team, yeah. There's like, a lot of d- defenders that deserve it. That aren't going to get it. Jonathan Isaac was so close to getting on here. Nine John, games off. Jonathan Isaac yeah. would have been a lock. Jonathan Isaac games. was a lock. Shit, he might have even competed for the first team. Okay. He, he would have been on first team. Honestly. Honestly. Honest, Draymond would have been on there, too. Would have took him off. You have you have Caruso on yours? First team, yeah. yeah Bam took him was off the one you didn't have. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Draymond would have took somebody's spot. Either. Draymond was a lock defensive team if he played the adequate amount of games. Yeah. I think the the cutoff makes it good to for, for these rankings, though. Draymond then it just gets suspension. super muddy. I'm with you. It does get muddy, but I'd still look at Draymond Green, and you could argue he has a top Blame three himself. floor, top five defensive impact. Oh, no, for sure. No, for sure. I right. agree with you. But I, I just love the cutoff because I'm just like, okay, now I don't have to debate in my mind of like who deserves it. That's fair. It's just what I know. Okay, these guys play the games. That's it. These are the so, ones that are So the rookies, that doesn't matter for them. No, no I don't think so. I thought so. No. All right, sweet. So my first team for the all rookies is going to be Victor, of course, Chet. Brandon Miller, Jaime Jaquez, and wrapping up that last spot, Kaysen Wallace. I just think he was super, super efficient. We're talking about one of the best teams in the league. And coming off the bench, I mean, there was no more for sure thing as a rookie off the bench than Kaysen Wallace. Gave you the elite defense. Gave you elite efficiency. Great three-point shooter. I mean, I feel like he has to be on this first team. I have Wemby, Chet, <laughs> Eamon, B. Miller, Gigi? and Jaime. Yeah. Okay. No, I didn't have Gigi. Gigi didn't play enough <laughs> yeah. games. I looked. I really didn't know he played that. Who do you have? I'm sorry. Uh, he had, he had a, yeah. Wemby, he had Chet, Eamon. Eamon, B. Miller, Jaime. Eamon. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's respect. Him. Eamon's a uh, second team. Wait, Gigi didn't play enough games? He didn't, no, not like on a, like, Wait, a scale like, like they 40? have it, but he didn't play a lot. He didn't play like I'd, 40 games. Well, my first team, I have Wemby, Chet, Brandon Miller, Jaime. I have Derek Lively for my fifth spot. Yeah, that's mine too. Lively's I think he's my had, second team. I think he's probably had the biggest impact of all, like that fifth person. I think Casey you can make an argument for, but uh, I think Lively has, has been more impactful for them. Yeah, my first team is similar. It's Wemby, Chet, Miller, Hawkes, Lively. The second team, I had Eamon tough. there. I had Gigi Jackson. I had AirPods. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had Bilal Koulibaly the from the Wizards. Um, the fifth spot, listen, I was looking at the guards. It, if you're putting Keontae George in the all rookie no. team, he's did not. you say you hadn't said Kaysen, did you? I didn't say Kaysen yet. It, he's probably the last player to get in here. Last? Kaysen was like the second on my second team that got in. I have Amen, Kaysen, AirPods, GG, and I His defense has been awesome, and his offense, I mean, I get minimal, still efficient. From Super what efficient. from what I've seen from Amen Thompson, I think he's been. I, I'd, I'd prefer him on the team. I mean, I've, yeah. opportunity so much more and then than Gigi Kaysen. Jackson, too. Gigi, I have. On my second team. AirPods and Kaysen, I feel like is a toss-up. No. Mm. Kaysen's been playing better. And honestly, Kaysen's been playing better. AirPods, 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 AirPods been playing more. He just gets more K- minutes. Kaysen's been playing better? 
I don't know about that. He's on, been a, shooting better. On the defensive side of the ball, he's, too. He, he's been shooting better. As a defender, Kaysen? Yeah, as a playmaker, go with Pots, Air- okay. by far. Okay, I'm with you. Now, AirPods is a little bit of everything. He has like a Swiss Army knife. I mean, yeah, he's... I think him and Kaysen got similar cases. No, he doesn't start. No, no, no. He had a stretch There's no disrespect to Kaysen. We were hurt. For me, I was looking at the guards, though. Let me ask you a question. AirPods over Trace? No, I have Trace on my team. Okay, I, I, I'm i saying I'm probably convinced over Trace. But Trace over is AirPods. only as good as Draymond is on the court. Mm-hmm. And I say that because his def- like he's allowed to do the things he can do because Draymond can play his yeah, position. Yeah. In all offense, him and Clay have that perfect connection. But mm-hmm. this the the like the responsibility Pods has, a little bit too much at times, but I don't like it's it's close. I don't know. Kaysen's cool. I have Kaysen on my five. Though. Like I was AirPods, looking at sorry. The, yeah, I was looking at the guards. Keontae George efficiency is, is Horrible. terrible. terrible. He's and if like you him. want to put him in a team, then there has to be an argument for Scoot. And Scoot to me is that. not. There's not an argument for him being on the team either. So, mm-hmm. I, so my second team would be a men, GG, AirPods, Bilal, and Kaysen. Okay. If I had to change one, maybe I take out Bilal for Trace. Mm-hmm. But uh, That's you know, cool. I think Bilal just you know he plays for the Wizards. My, sec- oh, God, oh, my <laughs> second team is uh, shout out to Golden State. We got two of these bad boys on here: Pods, Kaysen, Lively, Bilal, Trace. Okay, I went G. So you don't have Gigi. He's an honorable mention. Damn, respect that. Uh, I think Gigi was efficient. He was pretty. I, no, I, I I love Gigi. I I loved how he played this year. I just you know it was either him. Weren't you making a case to me? He could have been potentially first team, second team. Second I thought team. we were talking first team. We might have, but. That's why know, I'm like, kind of like, shocked here. No, he's pretty much locked, though, for the, one of these teams. I See, here's the thing. I don't know if he's locked. Like, I think Gigi's locked Gigi, over AirPods. I don't know if he's locked. I don't know. But Maybe. He, the one he's not he, that he probably is locked over because of games missed mm-hmm. would p- potentially be Bilal. I could take, but Bilal I, was I, elite I, defensively. I could talk myself into Bilal. Into Bilal over, the team. Yeah. I, I just, Pods made it. T- Pods is a lock. So mine is, I have Gigi, Lively for sure, Eamon for sure. I have Pod slash Trace. If I had to choose one, I'd probably lean Trace uh, for defensive impact, obviously, as a rim runner also. And then I have Bilal here. If I had to to leave one off the, this list right here, I think I would probably get rid of Bilal for the fact of time missed, but I feel like in terms of impact, I get it. The Wizards were terrible. I don't but his defense- Taking Pods, I don't know. We're talking 70-plus games for a rookie and being impactful and Ninety percent of them. He did. He did have some great moments. Listen, I I feel like again, I'm I would move Bilal off my team for pods, but that's because of the lack of play. Oh, you didn't have pods at all. I missed that. No, no, I have pods. Oh, okay, yeah, so I thought. Yeah, for sure. No I love for it. no love for Sar. Too hurt. Too injured. He would be a, like the third team. Third team. Scoot, would be the third, third team. team. Scoot might not make a third team. Oh, he could make the third team. Third team. He, I think that. third team. He's the last. Scoot had mo- has had moments this season. Some some good ones. <sighs> majority bad, sadly. But he's had some moments where he's shown you what he can be. Okay, I yeah. think he'll make third team just because we need guys, not because them, he them deserves. Them goggles, it. man. No aura. Get rid of him immediately. No, get rid of him shits now. And also, I need him double socks, zero. Stop. Gone. Double zero. Leave long it. Long socks. Zero. That's it. Yeah, I need a little. I need a little. What's it called? What Just do you put call a leg it? sleeve on. Leg sleeve. A little. No, 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 oh. no. Uh, when you have your long socks high, a no. little. What do you do with the that? stripes? No, oh, you, when fold you, them, your, you fold them. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, brother, just take them off and put a leg sleeve on. Please. I don't know. I don't know what the word. When you is. put your socks on, right? I don't know either. You fold them. I didn't know there was a word. No, there. I guess not really. What? You when say you, you fold ha- them down? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like you fold over each other, like. Why? No, not over each other. No, fold them down. No, when you have shorts on, you have your socks high. You like the regular Nike socks. Mm -hmm. You don't have them fully extended. You kind of have them shrugged a little bit. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Right? That's all I mean. Like that's what you need to do. He needs to just put leg sleeve on and call this day, bro. Leg sleeve would do would do a world for him. Scoot Henderson looks like he plays basketball after leaving eighth grade. Honorable mention that we haven't talked about: Jordan Hawkins started a great kind of just didn't get the same amount of burn. Plus, wasn't that efficient of a as efficient as a three point shooter. That would be my honorable mention. I can't believe we got into a Celtics have to win two rings in three years debate. Fucking crazy, just, man. I mean, with this roster, shit. Man, and that's going to do it for this episode of the Pick a Side podcast. Uh, fellas, we I'm made glad it, I didn't get a finger. <laughs> we made it this far. Um, we were talking about something before the podcast. I don't know if we want to say it here at the end. We a little teaser. Uh, one more conversation, I think. One okay. more conversation, then we okay. can, All we can right. talk. Just know we're planning something. We're planning something. So if you made it this far, you're listening, just know, you know, we're plotting. And there's a conversation that's going to be had later on in one of the episodes. And I was thinking, when I did my NBA awards, it sucks that we don't got to vote on it, man. On what? Should have a vote. That's coming soon. Vote for On what? the actual NBA awards. No. But Stephen uh, A gets uh, a vote. Shout out to Stephen A. <laughs> now, that clip of him going around saying uh, Quentin Grimes. 
Karen nah, Steen? He's, he's, it sucks because he apologized like at the end of the clip. Yeah. But it's like people don't stick around for that long to be like, oh, he corrected himself. Yeah, I think he did like I think he just had a like a mental fart or whatever. But Me too. It was just that's how the internet be. Now everything you see is how does how is Stephen A have an award and I don't? He's been doing this shit for like three thirty years. Numbers on the board again to vote. I don't know if they do or not. Imagine that'd be lit. Yeah, that would be tough. Get KB a vote, man. Get my brother Pierre, it's, it's D. Milly, and Mike media, right? You saw D. Mills got the... If they're on ESPN... D. Mills got the crazy... D. Mills got the Yo, Mavs OG. fucking... Oh, oh, that you got hard. the uh, Mahomes? He got the Luka shit. That that's was tough. tough. Like, he got essentially he the got whole, whole clip. He got a whole yeah. video. No, they should make... They, they should have a vote. If, they, if they're working for ESPN and stuff, they're partnered with ESPN, mm. they should have a vote, in my opinion. Like how do you you're partner with a reputable company like Love I feel like Mwah. and they know more than some of the top guys that get votes. Some so. of good amount of them, honestly. Perk got a vote. Shout out to Perk. Shout out to Big Perk, man. Fuck no. Respect him. Celtic legend, man. <laughs> JJ gets a it. vote now. I'm assuming RJ gets a vote now. JJ I'm needs of a course. vote. JJ's, JJ's the GOAT. You he watched is. this most recent episode of Mind the Game? I haven't. Is LeBron going to start getting a vote now? Because he's technically media. Nah, sadly not. <laughs> With the podcast. Wait, so let me ask you. So PG gets a vote. Brunson, yeah, Josh Hart. Uh, he needs more humor <laughs> media. Uh, it really is. Trey Young. Tatum had a stinker. Trey yeah, Young could get a vote. 30. Yeah. Huh? We lost by like 30. We lost by nine. What? Yeah, 118, 109. Oh my God. Yeah. You the bench must have went crazy. What was the fourth quarter box score? <laughs> oh God, Bro, we were down 30 going into the fourth. Oh, oh yeah, thirty-eight ah. to eighteen four fourths. <laughs> God damn! And that's oh, gonna so do it to have forty. That makes, Joel's that been makes, trying to end this episode for like pretty. five minutes. That makes it look pretty. We go to the end of the season. We lost by Brunson had points. forty in thirty minutes. <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter at Pickaside Pod on Instagram and TikTok at Pickaside Podcast. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.